One, two, three, everybody knows about it. It's called Rich Wallet in your pocket. They got carbon fiber, titanium, and ultimate it's freedom. Yeah. <laughs> Ridge right? Wallet. Ridge Wallet. In your face. In your pocket. Guys, <laughs> let me tell you something right now. This is the best wallet I've ever owned. And uh, we just gave out two just now. And when we gave it to the guests, they were like super fucking happy about it. And you know, I, t- I said, that's right. You should be happy. Because we don't have a lot of these motherfuckers. And these are special. I'm telling you guys right now. Look at it. Look at it. All right? We got this one. What style is this? That's burnt. the titanium burnt. Titanium burnt. We got this Ridge wallet, the black one that I have. Carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. You can't see through because of the LED, LSD screen. RFID. <laughs> RFID, right? RFID. LSD screens. And we got, let me say something right now, dude. Everything's compact in this little thing. You shoot it out like this and you umbrella and it does a little umbrella thing like that. Now he knows. Yeah, I know now. <laughs> Tell him about it, Gil. Go to RidgeWallet.com and use the promo code TigerBelly for 10% off. That's RidgeWallet.com, promo code TigerBelly. Yeah. Also, guys, um, don't say anything until I introduce you. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Okay? And that's, anything. You are the captain. Right. Thank thing. you. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. Are you ready? I'm nervous. No, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. What we'll is that? See. What do you think it is? <laughs> Bobby, what do you think it is? It's papaya. I said it. I you brought up papaya? Mexican papaya, too. Mm. It's a red one. <laughs> it is? Yeah. <laughs> How kind. <laughs> Can you um, give it to me when you when, after I introduce you, though? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't put a papaya up front <laughs> just open the fucking show like that's, that. That's, that? that's kind of strong. Yeah. That's like a way too big of an opening. That's <laughs> a big gesture. Like, dude, yeah, starting with the Let's story. ease into it, yeah. dude. Yeah. yeah. Go, you throw me into the bus. Uh, <laughs> Sit after yeah. the intro. Yeah. After the intro. <laughs> you, are you recording? Yeah. I, I want all this on. Yeah. This is just all in case. case. Just right. in case. I want this all as it. Um, do it, instead of a countdown, do do an English. Try to do a London act. Yeah, try. Really? Yeah. This is so cool. Beep, 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 beep. Go. Five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that wasn't bad. That was pretty good. Four. Yeah. Three. Right. Two. Hello. One. Hello. Hello. Okay. <laughs> so cringy. Welcome to the BBC. <laughs> it's so bad. I'm going to try it. We have two be- No, I can't do it. Please, I can't God, do it. stop. I can't, I can't do it. Stop. It starts from normally. Go ahead. Start from Five. normal. Five. Four. Yeah, there's three, a Filipino I like. Two. One. That, that Filipino accent. I love it. Welcome to... Barbara Streisand, guys. Another episode of the Belly. <laughs> Smooth jazz. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> Pretty good jazz, huh? Very good. No, honestly, guys, I'm in a really good mood because of our guests, but I'm not going to introduce them j- just yet. Um, I like to ease into things. And I, I like to tell stories as well. Um, but they're cute as fuck, and I want to fucking keep them in my pocket forever, you know? I want to make little personal dolls of them and stick them in my pocket. They can sing little lullabies to me. You know what I mean? When I'm taking a bath, mm-hmm. vice versa. Yep. I don't know what vice versa means, but yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, just, they're taking a bath. Whatever, vice versa. Okay. And um, it's just, this is cultural. This is infinite possibilities. I'm just saying things, you know. This is um, unique, a unique experience for me. We've got George here. Um, he's, I mean, we say he's white, but he's beyond white. Yeah, he is like bordering on, you know, KKK. Oh God! <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's basically what I'm saying. Yeah, he's bordering it. Bordering it. Quick jump. He's got his um, Bryce. The albinism. Yeah, we got Bryce here. I love him. Uh, we got Gilbert. Welcome back. Um, Thank you so much. You've been in every single one of them. I don't know why I just said welcome back. And we got my beautiful girlfriend, Kalila. Thank you, Kalila. And guys, uh, uh, about a, I don't know, a year ago maybe or nine months ago. Not a year ago. Or whatever. Like just, just, it doesn't matter. People don't fucking know the truth. Okay, that's true. They could. They, they don't know the fucking truth, so it doesn't even matter. I can say... Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, relax. We've got some beautiful kids here, and um, I want to ease into it. Um, about two years ago, <laughs> I was laying in my bed. I was listening to some music. And what I do when I lay in bed, I'll, I'll go to my... 
you know, there's the IT. I pay that extra iTunes where I get everything for free. It's like Spotify. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Right. So I, you know, I, I, you know, I listen to this. I listen. So I was listening to some Roy Orbison, and then I think it. Then it went to this other band called the Ruin Brothers, and I go, who are these little fucking fuck nuts? Yeah. <laughs> You know, when I saw a little thing, I go, these are fuck nuts. Yeah. I might not even listen to these fucking assholes. They're from England, all hoity-toity and shit. When I pushed play on the thing, it started, I literally, I'm not kidding you, I was laying, I think it was Shades of Blue, was that the song? Yeah. Literally, I was like, I opened my eyes like this, and one tear on the eye came down my face like this. A slow tear? A, like one tear <laughs> per eye went down my face, and I go, holy fuck. That was real. And then I listened, I, I saw their video of that, right? And your face looks so shiny in the beginning. <laughs> There's something shiny about your face, just glistening. You know what I mean? You almost look subhuman. I love it. You know what I mean? And the, your cute little brother, you know? Thank you. And I told... <laughs> oh, my God. No, 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 stop. I apologize. No, 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 no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yo, yo, let me say something to you, Rupert. In England, are there are there rules in England? Rupert, look at me. Are there rules in and in instructions in England? The, uh, so appar- apparently when somebody pays you a compliment, you have to say thank you. Or... <laughs> I'll let that slide then. Thank you. I'll let, yeah, yeah, to, but that's no? it. Stop. Okay. Okay, thank no, you. no. <laughs> All right? I'm going to do it in a second. And you can talk all you want. All right? Fucking bloke. <laughs> well, oh, wow. That's a cultural, cultural, cool, cultural experience. Bunch of hooligans in my fucking den, huh? <laughs> anyway. Um, and I've been telling everybody about it. Ruin Brothers, Ruin Brothers, everyone. I made Kalai listen to it. He was a little too excited because the next day, he doesn't usually wake me up for anything. Yeah. Because he knows he'll get the wrath. Yeah. But he was like, he knows like I'm a big fan of Roy Orbison. Or anything like that like that and so he's like sweetie wake up you have to hear this song he was that excited I'm not this isn't an exaggeration all the things he's told me to listen to he was most excited about you boys okay we got to introduce him because they, they want to say stuff. Henry <laughs> yeah. wants to say stuff so he's, it's like, and he's just smiling and just staring at us shiny but um, let's get into other, some other things before we do introduce them um, so, <laughs> so that they're a little bit more uncomfortable I, I like that whole thing I like that whole thing and so I told uh, her and I told a bunch of comedians. I said it on this podcast, Ruin Brothers, and people. Re- it really gener- uh, um, it generated some sort of feeling out there, man. And, and then all of a sudden, I found out that Kalila or somebody was in touch with you guys, and just gave me like warm fuzzies all over my dick, man. You know, oh what I mean? not God. in a gay way. That I didn't mean that in a sexual way, but yeah. I get warm fuzzies in my dick. I yeah. get it. Yeah. Okay, it's a fuzzy feeling and it's warm, mm. and it's in the tip of my dick. <laughs> Okay, and when I come, that's what I feel, oh and that's God. honest truth, and that's real talk. Okay, Rupert. Okay, anyway, so anyway, so then I get a call. I'm not gonna know. McClellan says they're playing, <laughs> they're playing, and I went and saw these boys Saturday night at the Troubadour, right? And boy, dude, did I? Did you see me dance? I did. You're dancing. A lot. I was dancing. Did you see, oh, wait, hold on. You're not allowed to speak. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I almost asked you. Did a question. Did you see me dance? I, I danced like I was watching the Pixies for the first time. Yeah, your hips don't lie, babe. Yeah, my hips were fucking grooving. The tip of my dick was doing the warm fuzzy thing too, as well. Yeah, and I don't know where that's from. I might need therapy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But and and I want to say this too. When you listen to people on the um. On the radio, or you know, we have a CD or whatever. You're listening to the music. CD. A lot of times, their live performances don't match up to the recording, right? These guys blew me fucking away, dude. Cute as fuck, so good. It reminded me though of it's like evergreen music, is what it is. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to introduce you guys. <laughs> Thank All God. All right. So Thank anyway, God. they're from Europe. That's England. fancy. That's fancy as it is. We've never had anyone from Europe on the show. No. Name no. one. No. No one from Europe on this show, dude. dude. Dude, we're getting fancy, bro. This is a lot. Right. And um Henry and Rupert stands <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Am I not right? What was the last name again, Bob? Stans- Stansman. Oh, so what did you tell me again? Stansel. Stansel, that's what I said. <laughs> yeah. and let me start that. Let me say that again. <laughs> Henry and Rupert Stansel. Uh, that that's that, pretty good. That was that's pretty good, good, right? Yeah. Pretty pretty. Uh, thank pretty you for that lovely introduction. <laughs> yeah, you, that was you the welcome. Longest intro I think I've ever Rupert. heard. You guys, nice. let me say something. 
You guys saw me last night too, as well, right? We did. Did you have yes. fun? We had a ton of fun. G- yeah, we were. G- g- give me some. Give me some compliments. I, well, you. Because <laughs> I, I, I blew you up, so just. <laughs> <laughs> well, our first time seeing you live, also. Thank you. Yes. And and we were uh, we all had an absolute blast, didn't we? Yeah. We were it, there with friends <laughs> and <sorry>. managers. <laughs> <laughs> And it was it was it was an honor. So we were we were we were um, all in in fits of giggles at the back. So um, no, it was a wonderful experience. It was my first time at the venue. At the venue, yeah. So first of all, it was lovely to be <laughs> the comedy store. Yes, yeah. the comedy. I knew it was cold. I just <laughs> that little to, venue. To be so treated cute. so nicely, and we sat at the back, and it was all lovely. And then uh, then we got to see you perform. So. And also, I told them, I go, treat them like, you know, like sometimes we get like Tarantino comes in there or like we have, uh, who's that fat, the Coppola, <laughs> that <laughs> fat Italian guy. He did the Godfather, Coppola. Yeah. He's been there a couple of times. No, you know, I go, crazy. treat him like that. <laughs> <laughs> and they did, they did. Yeah, they, 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 they were, were very, very good. sweet to us. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a truth to tell you, actually. Though. Go ahead, do it. I said to the, the very sweet lady who was... Um, Serving us, I said, can we, um, we would like to tip you before before we go. <laughs> yeah. And I said, can we do that? And she said, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, because we sprinted out in such a hurry, I didn't get to tip her, and I felt like an asshole. All no, day. I tipped her on your behalf. Oh, you did. Yeah. Oh, thank- that's very kind. <laughs> that's very yeah, kind yeah, of we you. We can give I, you I, that I, back. But no, are you on your fucking mind, Rupert? <laughs> <laughs> Rupert, are you on your fucking mind? That's not how it works in the United States of America. Okay? But we I we can give you this. Oh, my God. Wow. Now, that... Okay, I'm, can I say this? I know you, the audio listeners can't um, see this, but this right here is a red papaya from the islands of New Guinea, handpicked from the northern region. And this is in season at this northern... Is there, you went to Papua New Guinea, did you know? It was, a, it was a bit of a trip. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Thank you. That, yeah, and I had the day to do it. Yeah, the day. Did you, you went to Papua New Guinea in a day. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. With, with your wife. Exactly. Thank you so much. How, how come it's um, called a red papaya? Is it red on the inside? Because <laughs> it's well, there's red outside. Wait, 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 wait. Ask me that again, Rup. <laughs> Why is it called a red papaya? Because it, it's yellow. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Sure. Man, I'm going to answer that with a question of my own. Yeah. Do I look like a fucking farmer? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do I mean, you think that I my knowledge of this specific fruit is vast? It's not a mango, is it? Or is is, a, let me ask you this. Right. Did we say it, it was a mango? Like a, <laughs> I'm sorry, Rupert. I know you're so, from Europe. But <laughs> I know you're from Europe. I know. <laughs> I know you're from Europe, all right? Rupert, Rupert. But did, did we even allude to this as being a mango friend? Uh, no, no. But uh, we. Ca- <laughs> so I've I've had this confusion a little bit in the past. Yeah. We, um, uh, aubergine. Aubergine. Mm-hmm. You, that mm-hmm. is, uh, you call it eggplant mm-hmm. here. Yeah. And wait, 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 wait. Stop. Yeah. Stop, stop, stop. What the fuck aubergine, is an aubergine? Uh, aubergine. It's an eggplant. Plant. Yeah, it's an eggplant. It's yeah. a nice it was show. never aubergine. It's always eggplant. Right. In in Europe, though, well, they, it's called they have a fancy word for it called aubergine. Really? Yeah. I had no idea. I thought it had egg in it when I first came <laughs> Well, in the sandwich, I saw eggplant sandwich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eggplant parmesan. You know, egg and plant. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Wow. What can you do? Hey, what can you, I don't know what we can do. Yeah. You, you pull, pull them out of the bag already, Rupert. Yeah. You're doing can I say something? You're absolutely right. We, sh- we fucked up by naming it eggplant. It has nothing. Well, Why do they call it that? I'm not sure. Oh, wait. She has, she has an answer. Yeah. Uh, when they start to grow on the vine, they look like little eggs. Oh. Ah. Science alert, guys. Here's the farmer. The science farmer. alert. Science alert. It, lo- it looks like little eggs, right? <laughs> but then it would look like nut sacks, too. Why didn't you call it nut sack plant? <laughs> nuts was already taken. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nuts is already taken. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You look like you have hairy balls. Wait. We're <laughs> <laughs> not doing that. We're not I, I, doing I, I, that. Oh, sorry. Smooth PC right? ball. Oh, you see it. My smooth bad. That's my bad. Smooth that very smooth. smooth That's what I wanted. His do. wife is nodding. So. Shy yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I wanted, you, Henry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now let me say something to. I want to promote you guys a little bit before we even get into it. Is, is that um, <laughs> the the last album? I know that Rick Rubin produced it. Yeah. Um, what was that like? 
Um, he's a very uh, laid back, easy going guy, yeah. and very calm and, and has a very calming presence. He's uh, very patient. Very patient. Well. Yeah. yeah. Apart, apart from when you first meet him, it's sort of, you're a bit terrified because of everything he's done. You know, you we're just little just these kids from Scunthorpe, England. Yeah. And we'd gone from industrial town to palm trees and Malibu, and it was mm. like. Wow. You know, mm-hmm. kind of crazy, and he invited us to his house wow. of all places to go to uh, as an initial meeting spot. Wow! And we get there, and it's like, take your shoes off. And, well, his, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't say that to you. His uh, uh, Dave, the man lovely servant. Yeah. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> he, has a man servant. he he greets you. You go in, and he says, "Oh, you should take your shoes off. Take the shoes off." And then we we waited for Rick quite nervously. I think he was finishing doing some swimming. Um, doing laps. Fucking, doing some, <laughs> doing some laps. This fucking bastard. <laughs> he knows the meeting's at three. He takes a dip at 2.55. This <laughs> fucking <laughs> bastard. Anyway, but, I'm sorry that you had to wait. <laughs> but the thing was, uh, it wouldn't have been so bad, but our, our A&R guy said to us at the time, he said... Um, because we're usually late to things quite a lot. He said, whatever you do, don't be late for him. He's a very busy man. You know, don't be oh, late. Oh, of course, yeah. So we said, oh, yeah, no, we won't be. <laughs> and we were an hour early. Oh. So we sat at the, uh, at the at some little restaurant in Point Doom area and uh, just nervously waited for like wow. 50 minutes. Had he signed on before you met him or no? No, he he just wanted to like hang out. He'd heard bits of our music and thought it was cool. And yeah. so he was just like, oh, I'd like to say hi to the guys. And wow. And the meeting yeah. sorts of, he's always very busy, so the kind of like, the kind of heads up you get is like the day before on an email, like, oh, Eric would like to meet you. Wow. And so you just, so we went up and we, we he, but he was so nice and he was just, you know, we just talked about the music that we liked and um, we played him a few songs on acoustic guitar and he played and we said, oh, we, we like Roy Orbison, these things. And he said, oh, I did a song with Roy Orbison. And we're like, oh, shit. And, wow. And he played as it. And then after it finished, he just sort of said, um, Mm, yeah, that can probably do with another mix. Oh, that's what he said. That's what he said. Right. And he's uh, uh, a critical man, you know. And um, all he talks about is music. Yeah. Nothing else. We've met him a few times. <laughs> I mean, we obviously made the record, yeah, and, and yeah, since yeah. then we've been around to his house a few times. Yeah. And um, yeah, he uh, he tells us um, what he thinks to our songs and our vocals and our guitar playing. He's very more brutal than it. anybody. Yeah, he just says it and then moves on, which is we, very refreshing, yeah. actually. You know? Wait, wait. So he'll you'll do a take, where like you you lay down the vocals. Oh yeah, and he'll say, uh, "I don't like it." Well, for example, we played him a demo of a song. Right. Of, this was after the we finished out and we played him a demo of something, and he um we we're playing demos. And he's like, "Oh, that was great," and then he turns to me. and goes, oh, "I really like the song." He goes, "Ha, huh, but um, I think that's uh, probably the worst vocal take I've ever heard you do." No, the uh, most out of tune. Uh, most out of tune uh, vocal yeah. and, and I just sort of went, I don't know what to say. But, yeah. he, but the whole process was brilliant, and he was, uh, he's not this sort of presence like, oh, I'm Rick Rubin, so you do as I say. And, yeah. You know, he's just sort of about getting the best out of uh, yourself. And with us, he was just sort of stripped everything back, saying, well, you know, a good song is a song that you can play on an acoustic guitar and sing, and that will be a good song. Regard, you know, you can dress up songs, but it, if it's not a good song, it'll never be a good song. So wow. we focus a lot on that and he making gave sure the songs us the, uh, With the fabulous studio and the space they have there, it gave us the opportunity to sit down and play all the songs live and record the basis of the tracks Whoa. with a live band, which is something we hadn't really done before. We had mostly made songs as raw as they sounded on our laptop. Yeah. And uh, tried to get that 60s y, 50s y kind of thing going. But, um, well, like the, yeah. there was a band called Television, and they did a movie, uh, an album called Marquee Moon. They played the uh, CBGBs all the time. Marquee Moon is considered one of the best indie albums ever made. And it, the whole thing was recorded live, pretty much beginning to end. You can feel the um, electricity, and, sure. and yeah. you can get capture something live that you can't necessarily capture just to go track by track, you know? Sure. Yeah, yeah. well, there was a, and not. Pretty much all music today, or contemporary music that's on the radio that you hear, is all a, is, everything's done to a click track. Everything's done very mapped out. But yeah, this was sort of just <laughs> the way we we sat down with the band that he'd put together around us. 
that were like super musicians and we were you know we just we sat around with the guys and we're like should we play them our demos he was like no no just just strum them the song whoa so we go yeah. and we sit they're all fucking pros the, yeah we, we were not ready for it and we yeah. we sort of just sit in a circle in the live room and we play the song once and they say oh cool and then we play it once more and then Rick goes right is everybody ready and we're like <laughs> uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Are yeah, <laughs> hey, you yeah. guys? Because I because before we went to actually start work on the record, he would. Um, <laughs> I got a call from there, and I got out. He was like, "This was a Friday evening, and we'd not heard anything." The last words I said to Rick was, "He doesn't give a lot away either." I said, "So would you maybe like to work together or do something?" He was just like, "Yeah," and he wow. said nothing else. And wait, then wait, he, wait, so. Before it's the, this is the initial meeting. This is the initial meeting. The initial yeah. meeting, right? You put your foot in front of one from in front of the other, and yeah. w- did the bold thing by asking. So do you think, right? Yeah. And then were you scared what his response was going to be? Yeah, because I thought he might just be like, I just wanted to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been weird. And, yeah. then, and so it was. Uh, but I had to ask because I was like, well, come on, this fucking uh, Yeah, of course. <laughs> you have to ask. <laughs> have to ask. So, And he was like, yeah. And then we didn't hear anything for like two weeks. And I was like, oh, well, maybe that was the wrong thing to ask. Right. And, were you in LA or New York? Uh, um, well, we were back in London at this yeah, point. Yeah, we flew oh. back. Flew back to London. Yeah. And we got a call. We're just in our shitty little bed sit in London. And we're mixing we, some tracks. We were sharing a room at the time. Sharing a room. <sighs> and uh, we got a call from our guy. And he goes, um, got some good news and some bad news. And I was like, uh, okay. And I said, well, what's the good news? Give me that first. And he said, well, Rick Rubin wants to make your album. Wow. And and I was like, well, what's the bad news? He was like, well, it's really fucking expensive. And I, and I said, oh. and I said, uh, well, um, we, you know, we're not really, we've got no money. So I said, do you guys... <laughs> you know that like, oh, awkward thing where you're like, yeah, yeah. well, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he goes, yeah. well, I talked to I talked to Monty Nabry, who were the label heads over at Republic, and he said, uh, and they said, yeah, as, uh, you know, if the guys want to do it, we'll do it. Just make sure it's really good. Wow. And uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, and he was like, but he wants to start on Monday, and it was Friday evening. Oh, wow. And so we were like, well, that's that, it's great, but we have not properly rehearsed any of the songs, and we've not, like, you know, like, we have written the songs, but they're not, like... We're not like out there playing them, and, and right. we didn't know that Rick would provide a band. We were like, our and we're band just like, isn't our band doesn't really and... know them, and, ah. like, and he was like, well, th- I talked to Rick, and Rick says that he's got a band for you, and I, I sort of had this <laughs> like, well, do you think they'll know our stuff? You know, they're, they're gonna <laughs> yeah, play our songs, <laughs> and he was like, it'd like, be fine, just get on a plane tomorrow, and you know, figure it out. So you came to Malibu. Was it Malibu? Just probably LA. Well, and yeah, then- we flew into LA and we stayed in a, a, a like a weird Hilton in Calabasas, like just nervously, like on the Saturday night. And then the Sunday we were prepping for Monday. So we were going to the studio and we we're going to Shangri-La on Sunday. And we were sort of just told to, you know, Rick will go through some of the songs with you. There was five songs he wanted to initially. Which were the do. five? Because I know the album. So it was Aces. Love, Love that song. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it Motor was, City. It was no. It was Aces. Damn it. Summer Sun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it was, a great. It's Aces Summer Sun. Summer Sun. Um, Walk like a man. Yeah. Wait, no, it no. was it. It, no, was, it was Motor City because we'd written that. Before. No, it was Green Mile. No. I don't. Like, here we go. Oh, this is what I wanted no, to see. This know. is what I wanted no, to see. Brothers fighting. fighting. Yeah. The brothers fighting. <laughs> All right, yeah. I got there. What was it? Your memory is terrible. So I mean, yeah. Yeah. Whoa. I think that's an attack. I think that's an, old, I think that's an older brother attacking a younger brother, and I think that, that he needs an apology. <laughs> he goes deep. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Your memory is <laughs> Yeah. Never mind. No, it, it was Motor City, because my gut says it. <laughs> I, I, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to side with you on this one. Oh, Strangers was one of them. Strangers was one of them because we'd written that in 2012 or something. Or yeah, so well, it's oh no, 2011. Strangers, uh, yeah. Aces, Summer Sun, could have been Motor, Motor City, City, and then Shades of Blue. Yeah, I think on my Shades of Blue. Yeah. Uh, those, that's a strong lineup, Go, right well, there. Well, he yeah. told us that all our other songs weren't good we enough, so we were like, oh, we oh, had oh that's what he said. That's what he said. <laughs> well, yeah, he fuck was you, just... fat man. That's what I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'd say. But I'm not. I'm not a musician. <laughs> well, <laughs> I go, fatty, fatty. What are you talking about? You know what I mean? <laughs> well, we sent him a load of I, stuff. You, I, it's just me singing, not you guys. <laughs> he was like, I think you've got five. What? 
He goes, I think you've got five. Yeah. But you need to go away and work on the rest, and maybe we can pick from the others and you can work on them. Yeah. And rightly so. I mean, at the time, we, was, <laughs> we wasn't offended, but we were disappointed well, in, like, uh, in the fact yeah. that, that we couldn't just plough through and record the whole record. Then we had to go back to London after we'd done the initial tracking, which took and two weeks. be better. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So let me say, let me, let me just get this straight, okay? You guys recorded five tracks. Yeah. That mm-hmm. he sent you back. Yeah. We didn't finish five tracks. He sent us back for months. Kind of... For months. Yeah. yeah. So the rich fat man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in music. What, what is he going to do? But you should tell him your Rick Rubin story about how your entire life is, your entire clothing is fashioned to reflect Rick Rubin's that's sense true. of style. That's why I call him that. <laughs> that's why call he feels familiar. He's just feeling yeah, familiar, because I used that's to, all. Rick Rubin used to come to the comedy store, right. and I used to tell people that's Rick Rubin, and people are like, no, that's like a chubby f- homeless man. I go, no, that's Rick Rubin, right? They go, there's no way. And I go, in my head, I'm like, that's what I want to look like. Well, before that, but tell him when you didn't know him yet. And you said you saw him, and it was a guy dressed in all white. And you said, "I don't know who he is, but he looks important." Yes. Oh yeah. 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 And then someone said, "That's Rick Rubin." Yeah. 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 That had happened. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's so toned and bronze. Is he now? Now, no. yeah. Oh, b- because when he I... lives in. He doesn't have a home oh, in Hawaii. Oh, before, yeah, yeah, before when I knew him, he was this big Santa, Santa Claus kind of a man. Yeah, not no more. Like, he does him. laps before meetings. Yeah, oh, well, I don't know what he looks like now. Maybe he's he's revolutionized himself. He's revolutionized. he was looking good. He's, yeah. yeah, I read somewhere oh, that. But he... then he's not fat, <laughs> and that's my bad. But, but you, I mean... but do you remember what he was? Yes. Okay, well then there you go. It's not like I'm fucking faking it, making shit up, right? I honestly thought that's what I was walking up to. <laughs> we oh, did really? it as well. <laughs> initially. Right. Yeah. And when he walked, when he, like, when he came. <laughs> George, you okay? Forward. When he came forth. Fucking idiot. Through. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my bad. <laughs> no, that's oh all good. Get your shit together, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Okay, yes, okay. Sir. Sorry about it. Sorry about Go ahead. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> when he came through uh, after doing his laps, he was all, like, looking very. Fit and I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. Like, you know, really not how you I mean, previously wow. described him. So he looks good now. <laughs> he looks, yeah, very good. Let's just suppose, let, let's just give me, I'll give you an example. Let's suppose um, I met Michael Jackson when he did Off the Wall. Yeah. And then went into a coma, right? <laughs> and then like 15 years later, I wake up from my coma and I go, yeah, you know that black guy, you know, M- Michael Jackson? They're like, what black guy? We know a white guy named Michael Jackson, you know what I mean? Because he's changed. So I don't know. I can appreciate Do you like that history. analogy? Do you like yeah, that analogy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's like a pretty that. good analogy, I thought. Um, I reached back, and I, and I and while I was doing the analogy, I, yeah. I thought to myself, this is not going to work. But I went for it anyway, committed. and I committed to the analogy, and I'm going to stick by it. I think successful yeah. people probably change their appearance more than anybody else, and they're concerned with their appearance, so they try a little harder. Sometimes. I don't know. I see. I've only seen him wear shorts and a white t-shirt. No, I, I mean like his physicality. Oh yeah, that's, that's the right word, right? Yeah, yeah. That, Bobby, is the, that is the right word. Bobby is going Thank reverse, you. Rick Rubin. Yeah, I'm, I'm going the opposite direction. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm good. dying I mean, on the inside. The shape of that papaya. <laughs> yeah, this is the shape of my penis. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. I'm sorry for saying it's that okay. again. So I mean, how did this all begin? How old were you when you picked up a guitar? So I was I was eight years old. I think I picked it up previous because my dad had one around the house, but he didn't play it that much. He, he wasn't, um, uh, or still isn't the most skilled at it, but he knew a few chords and showed me a couple chords. And when I was eight years old, um, my parents said that it would be nice for me to do guitar lessons. And the only guy in the area who had any good sort of credits was this classical guitar teacher. So I learned classical guitar for about 10 years. Wow. Yeah. And um, you started playing guitar when you was at secondary school. So you was 11. I was 11. And he's a year older than me. Yeah. So what does that mean? That means I had to wait two years until I could play with somebody. I wanted to be a a, a soccer, a football, soccer player. Yeah. Yeah. you and have the body for it. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you have like a slendery kind of. I would say you're. How tall are you? Uh, just under uh, six two, I'd say. Six two. Yeah, you. I think you'd be a defender, maybe. A def- I I actually played right back and left back. That's what I meant. Yeah. That's what I. Did I you want to play professionally? I did. I was playing at a standard where I would have gone on. 
it was for like a a club team. Mm-hmm. So we were we were the team that I first played for was a team called Grimsby Town. They were one off the Premiership, and all the local kids hated me because I was from Scunthorpe, which was the rival town. But Scunthorpe United were taking too long to sign me, and this is all bullshit anyway because we're like little kids. But they took too long to sign me, so Grimsby Town wanted to sign me, so I went with them. But there's a thing the the, Grim, the people from Grimsby are, are called codheads uh, uh-huh. <laughs> because they what are they called co- cod heads like oh, cod heads. Like, like, yeah. no cod like the like fish the fish, like the fish. Oh, like the fish. Cod, heads. cod heads because they're um they're um they it's a big fishing town yeah mm. and um you don't pronounce the H's though it's cod heads cod heads when you're cod heads ah. yeah but you played midfield when you was playing I played them. midfield for a little while then I bust my knee up really bad. And I know this has nothing to do with the music thing, but um, <laughs> and you can say whatever you want to fucking say, Henry. Free country. Um, yeah. And uh, but it was a um, yeah, that was quite traumatic. So uh, I was play. We were. Re- this is honestly how we used to negotiate things as children. We would say, I would say to him, "Well, if you stand in goal and let me kick the football at the goal for twenty five shots." Or me. Um, I'll then play 20 minutes of guitar with you. Oh. And we would barter deals like that. Wow. Yeah. And, and then um, I'd, I remember good job being, I kept doing the guitar thing. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being about, when I got to about 11, my guitar teacher was selling this four track cassette recorder she could plug your guitar into. So when I got to that age, I realized I could play one guitar myself and record that and then play over the top of it. Wow. So I didn't need to negotiate anymore. <laughs> and then you, but then you broke your leg and... Yeah. And, and, th- I actually, and thank God you did. Oh, thank you. I, I, right? I, yeah. Thank God. Yeah. You could be on some bee fucking Nottingham Forest Isn't right that now. <laughs> yeah, Nottingham <laughs> Forest. You're not even on the starting lineup. You're a bench guy. Yeah. Right? And your fucking that. brother's a rock star. Yeah. Right? And you're trying to explain to people on the team, no, my brother just got saw, you know what I mean? And yeah. then, like, look at your life. Yeah. Right, but now God, what the Lord Jesus did, you be Christian, correct? Like me, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Lord, what yeah, the Lord I didn't Jesus. No, you're Christian. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not Christian, but like, <laughs> let's just. The Lord Jesus, what he did was he. Got, I'm gonna take his knee out. Yeah, because he's gonna do what he was meant to do. Yeah, which is music. Well, thank you. Okay, and that's why you're here right now. It is, you know. If yeah. you were in Nottingham Forest, you wouldn't be here right now. No. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Really here is um, not in Nottingham Forest. They must. Or third. I think they're in uh, second. So it's You're not doing it's, that pre- bad. it's Premiership first, first, and then the second. second. It's, I yeah. think it's there in second or in the first. I haven't followed it in so long. Baby, it's a thousand years away from the Premier League. Yeah, but they, still. Have to talk, they have to talk, take top three, right? Two years in a row. But what's yeah. this? Um, um, less not Leicester City. Leicester? It is Leicester Yeah, City, Leicester right? surprised yeah, everyone Yeah, they went from yeah. like yeah. four to premiership and like... For them to win the premiership... Was crazy. Not only... Cra- right? It's it like... Crazy. It's the craziest sporting story of all time, I believe. Well, because it would have been... If somebody had told you... Even like five years ago... Uh, actually, when did they win it? Must three been years ago. Years three ago, years ago. Yeah. If someone had told you five years ago that they were going to win it... You bet a dollar... You if you bet a dollar, oh, you'd be uh, you'd be a millionaire. I you'd think. be a millionaire. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Did somebody the, bet a dollar? Yeah, I think somebody bet like ten dollars and became really rich. From you do because wow. you, you do that reoccurring bet thing. It's it's yeah. it, it's so because you have to understand in the premier. I'm sorry, we're on a soccer rant, but the thing <laughs> is, is, in the Premier League, you have to understand you have Man U, Man City, Tottenham, Arsenal, yeah. Chelsea. You got jug Liverpool juggernaut teams, yo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With like international like world-class players for a little team like Leicester, it's yeah. a small town, to win the whole fucking thing is oh, it's, oh, it's mind-bogglingly like uh, far-fetched. Mm-hmm. Was it their first year in the Premier League too? I think it, it was their first yeah, year. Yeah, they went from, they I'm went not, really fast. I'm Maybe it was their sure, second year. I'm not sure how long they were, whether they were in, I can't remember if they were in it for a little while and just doing terribly the whole time they no, were in it. I think this was their second year, I think. And I'm their star year. was the 30-year-old Jamie Vardy, right? Yeah. God, you guys are not better than me now. Yeah, and, and, Ma- <laughs> and their star of the team was Jamie and, um, Vardy. And, like, and the guy named Mares, who now plays for uh, Man City. Mm, that's right. Yeah. Do you guys watch the Premier League? Yeah, I, dude, I, dude, bro, let me say something to you, Frank. <laughs> All right, I'm going to move this papaya, red papaya mango. Move the, okay. Give me the papaya. Yeah, yeah, I can take the papaya. Let me say something to you, my friend, okay? And I want to get real with you, okay? Yeah. I'm not intimidated by you two, okay? <laughs> I love your music. I'm a fan of your music. 
but we've had Dave Navarro here as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so, you know. Wait, wait, wait. I know. I but know. they <laughs> had um, Chad from the Chili Peppers play on their set and on And that's Saturday. why we're even. <laughs> that's why. No. Oh, before we get to that, we have a sponsor. That's right. It's one of my favorites, too. Blue, 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 because <laughs> I wanted to rhyme it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to rhyme it. I use the same word. My f- my fact, the fact is this: is that you could go to the f- restaurant and spend a lot of an arm and a leg Too much. to buy a gourmet meal, or you can get Blue Apron delivered to your house. Right? Simple recipes, gourmet recipes, and you can make delicious food right in the convenience of your own home. Wow! And Blue Apron off delivers farm fresh ingredients and step by step recipes to your door. Blue Apron's mission is to make incredible home cooking accessible to everyone. Blue Apron achieves this by supporting a more sustainable food system, setting the highest standards for ingredients, and building a community of home chefs. Let me tell you something right now. My best meals I've ever had is when Kalila makes me Blue Apron. Blue Apron, wow. Yeah, tell them about it, Kai. Guys, my name. So check out this week's (laughs) menu. (laughs) I almost called myself, I'm Chai. So check out this week's menu. And get your first three meals free at blueapron.com slash belly. That's blueapron.com. Slash belly yeah. to get your first three meals free. Blue Apron, a better way. What about you, to Jimmy? Jimmy, you got something too on your phone. Hey, Jimmy. I'm Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm Come on, Jimmy. I'm, I'm well, Chai. Chai. Come on, Chai. Let me tell you. Yeah, Jimmy. Tell um, me. I, mean, I have the Blue Apron app, and I get to choose exactly which meals I want delivered to my door. Mm-hmm. Um, you have the vegetarian options, and out of you, you're not. It's not a fixed three meal yeah. thing. You can choose out of like eight different things out of the menu. Blue Apron. That's all Jimmy had to say. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Back to the show. Honestly, guys, on if you're listening to me right now, and I'm going to get emotional. Oh, God. Baby, when I get emotional, don't do that because it really hurts me. <laughs> okay. It makes me angry. It, it switches my emotions. Let me, let me like double it. down. Yeah, oh, God. Yeah. Let me just say something to you. <laughs> don't make me laugh. I want to get real. I want to get real. Okay. I want to say something to you. Um, don't laugh, bro. Oh that's gosh. not. That's not. <laughs> He's being serious. I, I, dude, let's be serious. Okay, okay. And I want to say something from my heart. Okay. If you smile, I'm ending the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna end it because I, I'm gonna find that as in an, an international, you know, what I mean, offense. <laughs> it's an international offense. Like, okay, I mean, get I, it all out. I smile pretty much. It's fine, Rupert. Naturally. Yeah. Stop. Okay. <laughs> stop naturally. it. Naturally. Okay. I'm stop it naturally. Try. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> No, but I'm being real. <laughs> okay, okay. This is my house. You know what I mean? You're being rude. No, you're being rude. Okay. 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 You're smiling, <laughs> Rupert. Stop. I'm not fucking around. Stop. All right? Stop. You too, Gilbert. Smile. You fuck nut. <laughs> All right. All right? Fu- I'm going to say something real to you right now. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what uh, I, I don't know either. That's it. Okay. Uh, you don't get the compliment. I'm just now. Gonna... You don't get the compliment. Now, no, but you know how I feel, though. Look at Henry. I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know how I feel. Mm-hmm. No, but I'm going to be telling everyone, no, this is what I wanted to do. I'm going to get emotional, but don't even look at me. Okay. This is that um, I know I rarely like, I, I'm a, you know, I'll tell you my musical history if you're not listening. Um, I grew up, I was born in 1971, and I had a cousin, Paul. Okay. And my cousin Paul introduced me to um, the Velvet and Underground and Roxy music and that type of music. So I was really into CBGB stuff, Bowie. I was really into, but I also loved Orbison and loved the classic, a Beatle, big Beatles fan. So I love music, but rarely, as time goes on, there's little that can impress you, right? Because there's so much music from the beginning of modern day rock and roll that you're just jaded to it all, right? And um, I know that there's a label called New Retro that you guys are, they're trying to throw you in there. But I don't think, I, I think there should be a, a category called Evergreen. And Evergreen is a term that I like to use in my comedy. And it's like forever good. Mm-hmm. No matter what year you do it, right? It's just, oh yeah, this is just good music. You know, you have fads and you have things like, people love on Bieberber. What's his name? Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. Bieber. Yeah, yeah. Bieber. Then we love the Biebers, yeah. right? And then he goes, ah, you know, all the girls, ah, oh, suck it, suck. You know, they, they, you know, they love to do that. <laughs> exactly. They suck, suck. All of Brazil, I saw the Brazil one, where they were, suck, 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 you know, all the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then they take, um, oh, what's the other one? Uh, uh, I'm going to get his name, my um, 
James, what's his name? Um, the guy that was on uh, the boy band from England, One Direct. That's Harry Styles. Harry Styles. Harry Styles. Harry, suck, suck, <laughs> Harry Styles. All the England. Hello, hello, suck, 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 right? <laughs> and he's got so, right? But that's just a fad. <laughs> right, that's um, just no. His album actually is pretty, pretty, pretty fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> Aside from him, right? He's pretty. Good. That, uh, he tried to reinvent him with you know that album's okay, but um, that for one song was yeah. great. But um, yeah, but but you guys are evergreen, Thank and I, you. I, in Thank your you. heart, I always want I want you to know that. That means that's a very lot. kind. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I say it's very kind because um, I think you understand a lot. That it comes from a place of actually understanding music. You know, and it, also, I don't think we we don't try that hard. We want to make good music, but <laughs> I, 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 try, I, I try really fucking no, hard. I mean, we don't. What I mean is, we you don't try be, so hard to to catch any trend or whatever. We just kind of do what we like to do. That here's why, the, um, and I'm going to back what you just set up with what I'm what I'm about to say. Cool. Okay, there is no way in anyone's head they're going to force that. Like we're gonna force to make music like this, right? It, it it's it, that that kind of the kind of music you're doing is either organic or not. You can't because it's not a trend, right? So we'd have to come from some obscure. So you guys are just doing what you do, right? Like my style of stand up, people hate it. A lot of comics go like people, you know, like Mark Maron has called me a dancing monkey. Really? Oh, this guy's a fucking in an desperate. Way. No, in a bad way. At one point, I told him to stop calling me that. Stop calling me a yellow monkey, man. You know what I mean? But like, you no, know, a lot of people go. I'm a. I'm like. I'm so needy on stage. And I'm a clown. But at the end of the day, I don't know how else to do comedy. Though, you know, you saw my act, right? Yeah. That's just yeah. the way I do it. And that's no, that's that the great. that's the yeah. most that's yeah. how all of that's how all good stuff should be. You know, mm-hmm. just because be when when you try to be when you try to do something or try to you're always going to be on the back end of something and that's that's pointless it's pointless why because it'll you know you don't want to there's so many i i'm not going to i'm not going to say this because i'm not gonna, i don't want to be too political with the whole music industry thing but you hear a lot of music where i'm like oh actually that's a pretty good pop song I, um it, it could be a plethora of different artists you know, I'd be like, oh, it's that person. And then they're like, oh, and that was... Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, they all... A lot of people are sounding the same. And and I, I don't think that is a sustainable, like, right. thing. It, it just it just can't be. They're, they're, they're not going to be... Those songs and artists, you're not going to go in 20 years' time and, like, play your kids and be like, oh, listen to this. Right, right. And... I think you're, you know, uh, you kind of deliver... Um, well, we deliver essentially whatever we really think sounds good. And, you know, a lot of the, um, even with our first album, even though uh, Rick Rubin produced it, we uh, we were left alone to do many of the overdubs because Rick enjoyed what we did in our home recordings. Yeah. And um, we even pulled some bits from the home recordings, which we'd done back in London. And moving forward, I think that's just kind of, you know, we, we never feel comfortable with the track unless we really enjoy it mm. ourselves. Right. You know, we don't really compare our songs to anything. But let's be honest, though. And that with us, because we're friends. Can we say we're friends now? We're, we're um, in the beginning of a friendship. Can we say that? Absolutely. Like, in fact, I'm like going to say this so. on group level. I like you a little bit more than Dave Navarro. Oh, oh. Well, that, that's that's okay. a quiet Thank honor. you. <laughs> Dave? He might text you angry. I know he might text me, but Dave, okay? But let's be honest with let's be on, honest with ourselves, okay? You two, let's be real. You guys didn't grow up with Blink One Eighty Two. I mean, you didn't listen to like was, you didn't listen to Slipknot and go, yeah, <laughs> that's my shit. No, 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 you guys listen to things that I would listen to. Yeah, sure. you know, but like you know, um, older stuff, you know. Yeah. From the 70s, right? Yeah, our dad had this huge record collection. And it w- he would... I remember there was one album in particular that was on almost every dinner time. And it was a... Um, it was uh, Van Morrison's... Um, Enlightenment. Enlightenment, thank Enlightenment, you. Enlightenment, wow. I said that song. That I, that, that, yeah. It's one of my favorite albums of Van Morrison's of all time, the Enlightenment album. And that would be on all the time. Wow. And we were big Rolling Stones fans growing up. He would... They would play as... All, all, all the, 
all the hits, obviously, yeah. and then we get into the more Exile, obscure Exile stuff. Main, main Street is one of my favorite albums. Exile yeah, Main Street, yeah. Sticky yeah. Fingers. Sticky yeah. Fingers is great, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, I mean, just my favorite is probably, one of my favorites is probably Goat's Head Soup. Just, just some brilliant, they, they, they were so brilliant, and to, I mean, for a group to last that long, it's, you know, there's this, there's artists that you listen to from decades gone by, and it's sort of like, you know, that it'll always, I hope it'll always be there as we go along. But I, you know, you talk to some kids nowadays and like, I, I, the Beatles, who are they? Yeah, and I get it's like, crazy. Freak okay, out. Um, if some, <laughs> let me say something to you. We if have somebody, this debate if somebody all said the to time. me, if, some, if I, okay, Gilbert, name be, five, be, you know, you know, no, Gilbert, be, be somebody, go. be somebody that I'm meeting, and then I'm going to ask you what Beatles album, and you say I don't know them, and, and this is what I, this is what I'm going to say. So just some random guy. Yeah, we're at a coffee shop. We're waiting in line, okay. right? And um, say something to me, just. Dude, what's up, man? Oh, hey, man. What's God? What's your name? Carrie. Yeah, I'm Doug. What's up, Doug? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, man. This one. Uh, what I'm hearing is Starbucks. It's the it's a Beatle. I love the Beatles. Don't you? What's your favorite Beatle Beatle album? Uh, I think isn't there one called like Bluebird? Isn't there like a Bluebird? <laughs> Fuck you. Whoa, it's that's what I would say. It took a complete stranger in a public place? Yeah. No, you wouldn't. You would yes, I, I, I would say, fuck. And I would, you know what? You can't even see this. I would go, I would spit. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> and the guy goes, sorry, did I hit you? In my knee. Yeah, sorry. My, <laughs> my, my, my bad. He spit but on my knee. If there was like a little guy like that, that spit would go right in his eyes. And it would burn it because I have a little acid in my mouth. Mm. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do fuck feel that shit. Fat, fiery. It, it is <laughs> an injustice, I think, to be ignorant to certain pinnacle... Um, cultural events. Whoa. Was exactly that- no, exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. That's why I would get offended. Cool. Yeah. yeah. It's and a cultural. The Beatles was a cultural event. It's like when people go. I I, I dated this one girl that goes. What's the Vietnam War? I dropped her right. <laughs> I dropped her right. I, I stopped. I dropped her off. I go bye. What? Yeah, you're a full blown retard. Bye. <laughs> you don't deserve to even be walking around. Bye. It's a cultural thing, you know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, let me ask you some cultural things. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is fun. This is, okay. is going to be fun. All right, let me know. Oh, all, right, all right, all right. My palms are sweaty. Right. Yeah. Who invaded Pearl Harbor? The Japanese. There we go. Bing, bing, bing. That was a cultural event. Give him a round of applause, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, used yeah, to be yeah, in yeah, the yeah. You got nothing. Like, you got nothing. Like, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. I on yeah. your coattails. Um, another cultural... Um, Wait, but your wife's from Hawaii. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but did you know it was a Japanese? <laughs> I, I had to think for a little bit. <laughs> did you really have to think? Because I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's fine, yeah. But like the Beatle mania was a cultural event. You should know that. Yeah, and I feel that also a lot of what exists in today's culture is... Um, uh, what exists at the moment, I think, is repercussions of stuff which happened in the past. So, I mean, even things like you go back to the early rebels of music, which were like Elvis and the Rolling Stones. I mean, that's where bands like Slipknot essentially get their mm-hmm. rebellious streak, I would imagine, from. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, it's just taking it to further extremes yeah. to try and, yeah. you know, accentuate people's reactions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were big. We actually listened to a lot of punk music growing up because our dad... Um, Oddly, alongside like uh, like oh these Everly Brothers guys they eh? brothers and they sing harmonies so you should not have listen and <laughs> yeah. do, and and have a go at that and so he would play that and Robson but then he'd also play as like the Damned and the Undertones and the Sex wow. Pistols and the Stiff Little Fingers and yeah all these um all these old punk groups that's Sex Al- that's a Sex Pistols album the, the ne- one that never they mind did. the bollocks. That thing is so good from beginning to end. Well, well our dad yeah. actually, when Johnny Rodden left the Sex Pistols, there was still an album to finish with Virgin EMI, and um, they uh, had there was an album being made called uh, The Great Rock and Roll Swindle. Yeah. And our dad, <laughs> with Temple Tudor and two other guys, sang on The Great Rock and Roll Swindle. Wow. And there was a uh, a glimpse of him in the in the film and he was gonna then do an album with Sid Vicious and Sid Vicious went and died it didn't happen and he then just moved back up to the north of England married my mum and now they have horses and they don't do anything wow. in music so. but that's yeah. but that's yeah. what I was gonna get into it's, do you mind if I lean like this no before please am I too close <laughs> no. no it's perfectly okay. fine because I wanna do it this way okay is is that where you get it from or your mom the musical 
Um, well, mum can't clap in time or sing. <laughs> well, then, then your dad. So for it's sure, got to be, yeah, be dad. Yeah. <laughs> your dad, dad for sure. But our, our mum was very. Um, she'd put things on television like Calamity Jane. Do you know that music? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like 1953, Doris Day. Loads of dancing and singing that. It, it was more ornate music, you would say, more orchestrated. And yeah, like, yeah. And more gentle, you know. Yeah. More sort of, yeah, no rebellious streaks there. But with our dad, it was almost the opposite. And, um, yeah, we got a nice mix of music. And then when we first started playing shows, we would cover these songs from our dad's record collection. So wow. that would build up, uh, that would be the mainstay of our repertoire. And we'd pay play for an hour and a half yeah because yeah. what you you guys play yeah. what's that song John, was it Johnny Be Good what did they play at the end of there at the very yeah of your set yeah was it Johnny, Johnny Be, Be Good Johnny yeah. Be Good yeah the, I mean I've heard Johnny Be Good what a thousand times how many times have I heard it in my life you think um, about 958 yeah 958 yeah. times <laughs> very accurate right <laughs> and honestly when Johnny Be Good gets played anywhere this is sing it for me I mean, I'm at a coffee shop Johnny Be Good's on go I don't know how it just, just go. make it up <laughs> Johnny be good. Oh, my mic's up. Johnny be good. Johnny be good. <laughs> if you say, if you sing yeah. it, I'll probably know what it is. <laughs> so, wait, wait, stop. No, 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 no. I'm not going to throw him anything. Throw I'm not going to throw him anything. I, I just need a second. I need a second, okay? I need a second. All right? That was really good. This, no, it's not good, babe. <laughs> this is what you, this is what I heard. Yeah. Johnny be good. Johnny be good. I said it three times. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> anyway, when Johnny Be Good's playing at like a Starbucks or whatever, nothing. I don't. I there's. I don't move. I don't even listen to it because it's just one of those things that you've heard so many times sure. in, yeah. in, in a moving elevator. But when you guys played it, oh my god, did I dance or what? My little yeah, fucking happy little, yellow cheeks out or what? Yeah, your little hips were. Just swaying I was swinging like my little ass. My butt was <laughs> open. Everything was great, man. Warm fuzzies on the tip, man, everything. Well, what I That's found nice. interesting um, outside of the music was when we first got in contact and yeah. we talked, you guys listened to, I don't know what episode it was. A Horse Named Sizzler. A Horse Named Sizzler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on that episode, Bobby talked about his favorite movie being Paris, Texas. Yes. Yes. And you guys wrote back saying, whoa, that's a really strange coincidence. That was one of the really strange coincidences because when we, when you said that and it came just before you saying... The, about all my shades of blue and it's so strange because we are when we write our music and we will write and record demos all in in our home environment and we record them in little stages so we'll do, like, get like a verse and a chorus done first and and then to feel like we're on the right um path we're big tarantino fans big coen brothers fans wim wenders um you know all these all these brilliant directors and film inspires a lot if we see a great movie sometimes we'll just you know pick up a guitar and feel like want to write something um but with all of the demos we'll play them up against our favorite movie trailers and paris texas is one of the movie trailers that we use a lot mm -hmm. to play our music up against so it's a <laughs> it's you know it was just too weird a coincidence that we had just mentioned that you, you just mentioned and then you mentioned Paris Texas yeah. in that same episode so it was it's the Lord's work yeah it yeah. is it and brought us together it's Jesus Christ working in our lives <laughs> it is do you believe it do you feel it I, I kind of do the the um, <laughs> that's, that's that's rude we're at, we're uh, <laughs> that's very rude yeah. That's English. Sorry about that. Well, we're actually okay. Church of England. We were not um We've not christened. been christened. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were I'm not religious myself, I just say it just to say it. Oh, we, I kinda got that vibe. <laughs> <laughs> I just check in. I kind of got that vibe. Yeah. That movie Paris, uh, Texas, let me say yeah. it's about that movie. Or Vin yeah. Vendors directed it. Yeah. And um I love Harry Dean Stanton, but yeah. and this is gonna sound but that's how I think love is. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's almost like it, there was an old movie called Doctor Zhivago. Yeah, and at the end of the movie, he's trying to reach. For, they're on a bus. His the, the love of his life. He hasn't seen her in years. Yeah, and he tries to reach for her, and she leaves the bus, and he has a heart attack. <laughs> and he, it's so funny. It's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> but why, why would that be? Is that a nervous <laughs> laugh? <laughs> yeah. Why would that? Why, why would that? He laughs out of nowhere. Why would, I just <laughs> why would laughter could... ensue in your heart when I says something like that? That's a terribly evil. Yeah. Thing yeah. Like but he like trembles and he can't reach, you know, it's unobtainable That's very love. Sad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
That's how I, but now I ob- obtained it. So, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, once yeah, you got yeah. it. Once, yeah, once yeah. you got it, you keep it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, that's a sad movie. It's very emotional. Yeah. Raikuda did the soundtrack. Yeah, the and, soundtrack um, is just so good. And that movie, you know, I think the colors in it are blue, red, and what, yellow? Yeah, primarily. like in every other movie, you fucking <laughs> asshole. Yeah, but I mean... <laughs> There's well, colors in other movies, shitbox. But it's, it's Wait, a, you say the same thing I know, about... I know, I, know, I, know, I, know, I know, you're right. It's like I know a you're very... Limit, you're right. You're exactly right. A limited right. color palette. Limited Ex- color palette. That's exactly what... Yeah. I was just making fun of you. Robert. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's, that even translated to what we, we were going to do. We, we put out this song called Unknown, and we were so struck by Paris, Texas, and it's colors and things that we use similar colors in a little video we made for that, which we put on Facebook. Oh, yeah. cool. And, um, and also it translates onto art artwork for the first album there's like three colors in that blue mm. pink and uh, yellow you know. yeah here's yeah. another movie that will influence you um it's called kicking it old school <laughs> and the colors are vivid yeah, vivid colors vivid it's colors. a break dancing movie they did with jamie kennedy and myself <laughs> <laughs> and you can find it in the three dollar bin at walmart wider yeah. color palette yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've got every color in that one every color yeah, right. 62 nice. colors in that one 60. give them it yeah, all yeah yeah and it's probably one of the worst movies ever made but maybe that you can find inspiration in that one what's another bad movie i did uh <laughs> we'll get the trailers and start no, with pretty, the new album yeah. just running them <laughs> yes please <laughs> <laughs> it literally is one of the worst movies I um I enjoyed it when I was in high it's school. Funny. Yeah. For for different reasons though. Just because it's one of those just brainless dumb things to watch. <laughs> just like, oh, those are dumb people trying to dance and you just sorry babe, I didn't know you at the time. But it was I amusing. had to fight I rem- I had to fight to be in that movie. Did I tell you that? No. My brother and I went to like nine auditions <laughs> right for to get this That's and at so the ninth many. one Jamie calls me, Ken, and he goes, you got to kill it on this one. <laughs> I go, why? He goes, everyone's going to be there, right? So I do the audition, and afterwards, I'm in the hallway, and Jamie's like, I don't think you got it. And I was <laughs> devastated. Yeah. Like, tears welled up in my eyes. I'm not going to get it! Right? And then he had to convince the owner of the movie company. And I remember being in Canada shooting, being so nervous. I gotta kill the scene. <laughs> I'm dancing. <laughs> yeah, I'm dancing like on the tearing thing. your ligaments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like every, yeah. I mean, and th- I did three months of dance class, and this is the worst part. They go, "Hi, we've been watching at rehearsal." I go, "Cool." They go, "Yeah, no, <laughs> we have to get you a, a body double." And so they couldn't no. find any body doubler that was a guy. So if you look at the movie and you see any cutaways from my body. It's a fat Filipino girl. <laughs> oh dear! Yeah, wearing my outfit and she all all her dancing is, but my face in it. So yeah, but that was good. Filipinos, you know I mean? we know how to dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she had my body, which is so sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Imagine a girl with my body. Oh, oh no. Anyway, you was kicking it old school as your. You know, <laughs> as your what are other ones? What? You were in Final Recipe. I'm just looking at your IMDb right now. <laughs> yeah, I was in The Dictator. That's the good though. Good. good. I was in um, What's Wedding Palace. Let's just drop that was a shit one. Guys. Yeah, drop cut. I was in that new one uh, that Zach Galifianakis. What was it called? Keeping up with the Joneses. That wasn't that great either. Sweetie. I know. I've been in shitty things. I, my career's over. Okay. In, in all fairness, <laughs> I had a shitty uh, career and I, it's over. What the fuck do you want me to do? You, you uh, can't control the latter ends of the. You can't control what people see to an extent. You know. This fucking guy is blowing my mind right now. Dude. <laughs> Literally everything you're saying right now is blowing my fucking mind. Is it? Is it true? It is true. Oh, you. Cool. Here's the thing. We can't. You know. What do I? I didn't write the thing. Yeah. Right, I didn't. Yeah. I have nothing to do with it. They want me in it. I do the best I can. Yeah, it's like that movie, The Last Jedi. Do you see it? No. <laughs> do you watch any Star Wars movies? I, I, I'm gonna maybe hurt your feelings. Um, I've never seen Star Wars. I've watched. Mm. I've I've watched, watched stop, no, you've not. Rupert, stop, so <laughs> Rupert, Rupert, oh no, you've stop. watched one. R- Rupert, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop for a second. <laughs> Now, did we not talk about cultural shit? <laughs> we, we did. Yeah, we talked about cultural <laughs> events in the world and people not knowing those cultural events, right? Mm-hmm. Now, these two hooligans come onto my fucking podcast and they state out loud, they've never seen Star Wars. Well, <laughs> well if they said that. <laughs> <laughs> so I've seen I've all three. Seen... Of the first three. The very first yeah, three. Yeah, I haven't seen the remake stuff, uh-huh. but I don't remember it that vividly. There's the gold robot, there's R2-D2. 
Wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. I know, no, the, I know they no, are. Henry, Henry, stop, shut the fuck up, all right? What's the gold robot's name? I have no idea, but he talks really well. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's polite. English. That's why you're saying that. Oh, okay. Saying. I, 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 yeah, 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 I didn't yeah. realize why. that. But, um, and a lot of it's set in the desert. And uh, <laughs> The first movie is set in Tatooine, yes. And there's something called Jedi Warriors. Uh, yeah, there but, is something vaguely called Jedi Warriors <laughs> in the fucking movies. Uh, and I don't, are they the good guys or the bad guys? They're the fucking most evil people in the world. Oh, okay, yeah. so, and there's Luke Skywalker. Yeah. He's, He's good. He's Very good. good guy. Yeah. Darth Vader. Uh, What's his sister's name? It. What's his sister's name? I know this. I didn't know he had a sister. Yeah, he does have a sister. A sister in the movie or in real life? In real life, <laughs> in his personal life. Yeah, he has a sister. Mark Hamill does. Okay. You fucking idiot. No, he has a sister in the movie. I'm sorry. So, Your wife is here. I apologize. So but aggressive. Sometimes I had to get. I have to get aggressive with these. Listen, what you're saying to me is making my throat my throat sore. Uh, I, I mean, can't even swallow right now. Okay, yeah. so I'm gonna ask you some other questions. Sure. The hairy guy. What's his name? The hairy guy. Yeah. That is... Uh, just try know. Just throw it out. Or make the sound. Yeah. Yeah. Just throw it out. Uh, Whatever you think it might be. Monster something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> know, but he, Monster he, Jack. That's his name. <laughs> <laughs> You're close. You got the first half right. His uh, name oh, is Monster oh, Jack. A, uh, like a Yeti thing. He's uh, a Yeti. Yeah, Monster yeah. Jack the Yeti. Yeah. <laughs> He's from Colorado initially. And he grunts. <laughs> he grunts. Yeah. Dead yeah. on. What else? So uh, you got the golden robot yeah. that has a fucking English fun accent. English accent. You got the Yeti that's in it, right? Yes. Luke yeah. Skywalker, Monster no Jack. sister, Monster right? No. Yeah, what's now? Who's the enemy in the first three Star Wars? Anime. Yeah, a- enemy. 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 Oh, yeah. sorry. Um, who's, the, who's the one? Darth Vader. Very yeah. good. And what's his relationship to everybody? Uh... He's the boss of... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's America. the boss? <laughs> of, of the bad guys. Yeah, he's yeah. the boss of the bad guys. And, and he has no other relation to anybody else in the movie. Um, yeah, he does. He does. Yeah, Henry, shut the fuck up, all right? <laughs> this is Rupert's, Rupert's on the hot seat. I don't know. Is he a robot or is he like a person? He is n- he neither. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, he's a uh, ghost. He's a ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. No. Oh, right. no, you know, Darth Vader, I'm going to tell you now. Mm-hmm. First of all, the Yeti <laughs> is not a Yeti. Oh, okay. all right. His name is Chewbacca. Uh, two, ch- I thought, now that you've Chewbacca. said that, is it Chewbacca or Tubacca? It's Chewbacca. <laughs> it's I, I Chewbacca. can't tell. It really is Chewbacca. AKA Monster, AKA Monster Jack. Monster Jack, Monster Jack, the Yeti. Okay. Yeah. So it's Chewbacca, right? Okay. <laughs> and his partner is who? His best friend, he roams around with uh, him. R two D two, exactly. It, no. <laughs> you really have, have you seen the movie recently? No. Wow, oh, that's dead. No, on. actually, he he co pilots something. Yeah, yeah, yes. is that yeah, true? yeah. He does. Yes. That's very good. He co pilots it with him. Who's the co pilot? Luke Skywalker. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I'm going to think of this. He just had his own Star Wars movie. Wait, the yeah, his co pilot had a whole <laughs> movie. Just named after his name. What, Tubaka or? Yeah, Tubaka. Yeah, yeah, oh, do you yeah. mean his? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's too much. It's, it's too yeah. much. To, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, Don't watch Game of Thrones, man. It'll fucking confuse you. Yeah. It'll confuse you. Um, so yeah, so his name is Chewbacca. Ch- Wait, Chew, I, it's not Chewbacca. Oh, it's Chew. Yeah, it's Chewbacca. Okay. All right, I know that for a fact. <laughs> All right, so don't say Chewbacca again. <laughs> My brains might ooze out of my eyes. Someone okay. animate this. Please. All right. His name is Chewbacca, right? Okay. His partner, he used to fly. Don't even set that back up. You don't know how to do it. Don't set it back up. All right. Don't even touch it. Don't even fucking touch it. All right. His his partner is Han Solo. They just did a movie called Solo. Oh. Yeah. And what does he look like? He's hairy yes. as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> really? No, he's just a, I'm a human. But tell him who plays right. it so he knows the reference. Well, Harrison Ford originally played. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. And okay. then, um, and that's that, yeah. And uh, Darth Vader is the father of uh, Luke, Luke Skywalker. Skywalker. Oh. He's also the boss but they of fight, the bad guy. Right? They do fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spoiler. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so, Henry, yeah. you've never seen any of them. No, but I, I knew that. You knew all that oh, stuff. Yeah. I, I knew all of yeah, that. Yeah, I knew you did. And your brother has a problem. <laughs> yeah. Because if you've watched it and don't know that, then... Yeah. <laughs> but there's not only that, it's just... 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But also, we're not making fun of. We're with you. No, it's okay. Yeah, we're I mean, with it, you. It, and it was also a few years ago I watched it. And That's true. But yeah. also, to your defense. If I ever ask you anything about a film that you've seen or somebody's name or anything, you just go, oh, and you pretend like you're thinking for a minute and then you just go, oh, I don't know. <laughs> and oh. that's his answer to everything. But also, I don't know whether <laughs> Sweet. in films, do they actually call the characters by the names that often or do they just talk to each other? Whoa, oh, now you're being good. argumentative. I love it. You're trying to defend <laughs> yeah, yeah. your point of view. I mean, I enjoy it. I enjoy what you're doing. I don't know. Did you I'd see like Lord of the know. Rings? Mm, no. You but never... I think uh, I've seen, I, I must have seen bits of it. I remember getting the book, <laughs> The Hobbit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I, I was like, we were it. all required to read The Hobbit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think cool. I fully read it. Yeah. I've seen Harry Potter, though. You've seen Harry Potter, all of the Harry Potters. We actually went. Around Warner Brothers Studios the other day, mm-hmm. got a very nice little tour. Yeah, that. it's and so weird because that's where my show is being is filmed. Oh, I was probably nice. there when you were at Warner Brothers. What day were we there? We were there. It was two days ago. Two days ago. So it was. Uh, I wasn't there. Sat- Saturday. Yeah, we were there on a Saturday, weren't we? Because I was shooting there yes. on a Friday. Fi- I was shooting there Friday. Oh, oh. Friday. Oh, that would have right. been great if wow. I was walking around and they could walk. Were you in a tour <laughs> bus? <laughs> no, we were with we were the gent. Uh, oh, I don't know if I can say this without getting in trouble. No, he'd be fine. Uh, a guy called Robert who works in uh, the music licensing of course, department. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah, you can get, go on there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he was he was showing us around, and um, yeah, we got to we I I got sorted with the hat. Oh, and <laughs> you oh, yeah, 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 yeah. and you are. I, I like. I didn't expect to be, and I was kind of like, hmm, I think I don't know if you're right, but it's always right, supposedly. I was a Hufflepuff. Oh, oh my God, oh, you're a Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff. It's a Hufflepuff. And yeah. Rupert, you were what? You, Gryffindor. You were Gryffindor. Oh, you are a Gryffindor. I'm Slytherin. Yeah. Oh really? Uh, yeah. None, of our, none of our were... group got Slytherin. Mm, I'm which, Slytherin. Yeah. What's you? What are you, Gil? Uh, Gryffindor. You are. I think yeah. like everyone's Gryffindor, right? Ask me what I am. Bobby, what, what are you about? Crips. Crips. <laughs> Don't say Crips, bloods. bro. What's up, dog? <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. But when I say some say something right now, my parents were blue collar immigrants. Didn't know nobody from showbiz, bro. Mm. And I crawled my way up. <laughs> we're, th- we're the same. Yeah, you've done very well. Done very well. <laughs> <laughs> all, hand, all hand, everybody. <laughs> yes. We feeling it. We worked hard. We <laughs> and uh, we're very. We're, we we didn't know anybody. Well, yeah. Yeah. It was. How, so, how did what was the process between where you guys were to Rick Rubin's house? Uh, how did that happen? Yeah. How did that happen? It it came from uh, well, we played a ton of we played a ton of shows in our hometown, and then it got to a point where we got to like twenty, twenty one, or twenty nineteen, and we were just like, you know, we're just playing cover songs to the same pubs, mm-hmm. work men's clubs, trying to slip in out. one or two of our own songs and hoping that but that meant people nothing to enjoy. Anybody. Uh, and then we would say, and then our, our auntie uh, our auntie said to us auntie Karen she said you know you really got to get down to London you know that's where you know you if you stay in this town you, you know it's not going to you're not going to go anywhere and so we we took that on board and um we moved to London and we you know we'd always growing up we'd always shared a bedroom and we didn't have a lot of money but we never we never went without our parents so it was very caring it was did their best, but we, you know, we didn't. We were not like moving to London, moving to swanky places, like, <laughs> right. having yeah, a great yeah, time. We yeah, were yeah, like, yeah. but we thought maybe we would have our own room. But yeah. No, we moved down to Bedsit, which is a, a. It sounds like a. It's a crappy term for it's a, a studio. studio, and mm-hmm. but so it has studio the apartment kitchen and everything. Mm-hmm. Well, you you guys room. slept in the same studio, but was there any other body there or no? Is no, it you two. Well, it was in a house. Oh. It, the studio was in a house, and it was really unusual because it's just a room. Then it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a room yeah, in yeah, a yeah. house. <laughs> yeah. But it was it was the strangest house. We would <laughs> it had all wooden boards on the windows. Oh. It was like ah. a it looked like a it looked like a a, a pro, it looked like a crack den, Mm-mm. and ah. all rubbish strewn out the front. And we were like, oh, we shared so the cheap. bathroom. We with shared the bathroom the Bulgarian with guy. the Bulgarian guy in the room next to us. <laughs> <laughs> Which and he, ha- he, Bulgarian guy's funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I forget what his name was, but we called yeah. him the Bulgarian night terror because he had these night terrors. And Rupert used to sleep. <laughs> really? Rupert used to sleep with his head against the wall, where his bed was also against the wall, and he would <laughs> yeah. he would wake up in the night and just go. Ooh! 
<laughs> and I would have like a peaceful night's sleep. I'd yeah. wake up and Rupert would be like, did you hit? Fucking, did you hear that last night? Oh my god! I'm like, what? It was like, no, the, the guy in the room next door, <laughs> he like yells, and screams wow. in the night. Yeah. And then there was this, there was two girls in the other room next to us. They were at the bottom floor flat. These two guys. This is totally nothing. There was to an do with actor that there because I don't care. This is this though. is the good shit. Yeah, I like this stuff. <laughs> an, I love this. Stuff. There was an actor and. I totally stereotyped the other guy. I was like, he's an electrician, the other guy. And <laughs> yeah. they both shared this apartment together. <laughs> yeah. And they, they were on the bottom floor. The next floor was these two twin sisters who you barely ever saw. And they, like, and you couldn't tell which one that you were meeting when you met them. They were identical. So they're identical. So, it, and that was really strange. It was probably just one girl. Yeah, it could have just been <laughs> yeah, yeah. No just two beds. Just, yeah, just two beds. Yeah. <laughs> and then the Bulgarian night terror in the room. Yeah. Good, yeah. And we shared a bathroom with him and it, that bathroom looked like it had never been cleaned when we first moved. And he well, was he used to smoke in there. He smoked well. in there, so every morning you'd walk in there and there'd be cigarette ash on the toilet seat. Oh, man. And I just feel like, it's a bummer. We're in the bath. Was there a shower? Night terror. Oh, it, it was yeah. a shower bath sort of thing. There was red stuff in the bath. It's called blood. Uh, it, that's called blood. It's, yeah, yeah. It, it, was, it was either blood or it was what was that, what's that stuff that's very dangerous, harmful to you? It wasn't mold, mold. but it wasn't mold. It, it was, was like a, a red scale, thing. a bacterial thing. Wow! Oh, and it, that was kind of gross. And then the floor above us were these two um, these two girls that played. Uh, industrial like German techno music and had these wild parties <laughs> until like fuck? 3, 4 a.m. Yeah. So we were in this weird fucking house. This is this a what, show. This was what we'd moved mm-hmm. down from Scunthorpe to. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I don't know, to the big lights of the city. <laughs> and we were like, oh, you know, it's going to be great. And so we're just, we'd like, we try and, you know, between the night terror and the 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 techno how many years partners. ago was this exactly this was when this was this was about five years five years ago. years ago incredible and so we we got to a point that was like we were there for six months and we were kind of poor and we were coming back up north doing shows in our hometown to pay for the the flat and we would then trying to like give our own music to people mm. in London and uh, it was getting to the point where we were like we have no fucking money <laughs> and we were like we're like um, sharing like tins of beans and stuff and like and then uh, and the the room was just it had this big window and not only did you have to put up with the noise of the, the night terror and the industrial techno the foxes would have sex outside your bedroom window and that <laughs> whoa, 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 sounds like is, is, is that a gang or is that human beings or is that <laughs> yeah. actual foxes actual foxes <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never even knew I thought they were a mythological creature no they what? sound they're like they're really foxes out foxes there exist. holy fuck well, that sounds man. like murder yeah. it sounds like they're killing each yeah, other yeah. and it's oh, so really? sounds like babies sounding. screaming <laughs> so really? we had all actual like noise. human ass oh you know? wow and yeah. um but we, we Henry wouldn't another thing Henry oh, wouldn't ever open the window because he was scared of spiders coming into the room <laughs> so in the summer it was super hot <laughs> we didn't have air conditioning have you ever seen a big fucking house spider in like London or England they are, they're like the size of this sticker oh, and have like wow. my bed my bed was right up against the window yeah. so I was like I'm not fucking open this old janky window and, yeah. it, and the window had to be propped up may I add with yeah. a, like a, a, a crappy piece of wood defend your point of view yeah, yeah like so it, yeah. I was like I don't want to trap my fingers in the way you know I can't yeah, risk yeah that. you can't risk it no. and Rupert so gets just, so there's like a angry. sweatshop in there it was, it was terrible yeah and the we had this old sofa that was in between the two beds that looked like the landlord had had it in there for oh, I don't know how long just and it pulled a out thousand to a years. sofa a thousand years yeah, probably because yeah. England's quite old like that so <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and um, so yeah and we would make music at the foot of Rupert's bed there was um, a table, a smaller little table, than this. smaller than this, like half the size of this, yeah. and there'd be a MacBook on it. And we piled another table on top of a table and put two really like wow. bad speakers on top of that. Ear level, you know. And we would record. We recorded. That's when we first moved down. Uh, moved down to London. We were halfway through writing song Aces. We just watched a Harry Nilsson documentary, Imagine, uh, and that inspired us to write because we're like, alcoholic. We've never, He's yeah, alcoholic. Yeah, yeah. 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 We were like, we'd never written a good song, so we should try. And after we did that, we went up to our bedroom, we'd play it, and then we moved to London. We you know, it's so fucking weird. You said that. Yeah. You just, we were because just talking you know about Harry to, Nilsson. You know, you know what happened really? at the Troubadour? Where no, you guys no. played? Where you guys played? Yeah. There's a notorious thing that happened there. The Smothers Brothers were playing there. They're a comedy act. 
and Harry Nielsen and I'm John running. Lennon got dragged out of there by their hair because they were heckling. Ah. I've heard this. St- yeah. That's on the Imagine document. Have you se- have you seen this Imagine no, documentary? No, but what I'm saying is I know that that happened through folklore around town because I live in the town yeah. that that had happened. That's wow. crazy. <laughs> I think I said that to you too when we were at After the Troubadour. After we left the Troubadour. Yeah, yeah, I go, you know what happened there with John Lennon and Harry Nilsson? Oh, wow. It's incredible to think that those people have been in that location you know mm-hmm. and um or even at the super- comedy store you know yeah. Yeah, Let- yeah. johnny carson letterman everyone yeah. robin williams jim carrey yeah. everyone played in that room yeah that's the beautiful thing about being here as opposed to being in scunthorpe where we're from <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> nothing happens in scunthorpe well, we, we have we're we have landmarks but it's kind yeah, yeah. of like a landmark to when a flood <laughs> happened probably you know, 80 years ago. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah yeah someone died here <laughs> Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And um, so, yeah, it's nice. Like, we went around the Warner Brothers studio and they had Humphrey Bogart's, you know, the suit he was wearing from Casablanca. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The trench coat. Yeah. yeah, the trench coat thing. That was incredible. It's you incredible, know? yeah. Yeah, and you just, you can't really find that stuff anywhere else. So, um, but we, yeah. we, we were at destitute point oh, yeah. at, like in London yeah. Des- yeah. it was just like a uh, it sound, you know, when you were describing that with the spy and all that and the Bulgarian I'm literally thinking 30 years from now when they make the biopic of you guys like who's gonna play you guys I'm like envisioning it as a movie <laughs> I like that's a scene from a movie of their so fucking biopic so you wrote Aces there yeah it's incredible that's incredible that well, is an amazing song thank and you and we shot the, there's a video on YouTube for Aces it's still up there it's the it's, the, it's not the Rick Rubin version of Aces it's, it's the our earliest version, version. Mm. um and yeah we shot that on henry's iphone 4s <laughs> yeah we, t- <laughs> we turned all the lights out and used our lamps as little spotlights for the faces and things and you get it you did it in the apartment yeah did it in, in the studio i there have was, to see this we, i have to see it yeah we, s- we were swearing at each other a lot and we were trying to balance the camera on top of like the iphone yeah the, the iphone balance. on top of things to to, like keep the shot still and then we were, we would we integrated the video with our favorite like movie clips and stuff mm. like that to the things that inspired us and that sort of stuff but, but that that song got suddenly got recognition via BBC introducing we uploaded it to their introducing website we, it was recommended by somebody to do that um yeah i think yeah, it I was. Forgot. So that particular but, but, Aces got uploaded on some sort of BBC thing. Yeah, yeah, they have an obligation because taxpayers pay contributions to have TVs or radios or whatever, television mm-hmm. license, and they have an obligation to bring new talent forward mm-hmm. yearly. Wow. And so we kind of came up through that, and it went from a local level and from local DJs to county level and then to national radio airplay, and yeah. Zane Lowe spun us... Three times in a row. Whoa. One night. On radio, on BBC Radio One. Yeah, and from there we had record label people come into our shows and publishers. All like we couldn't, Managers we couldn't play to ten people. And then on the fifth of February, we was doing a gig at fifth of February. Was it? 5th of February? I think so. Notting Hill Arts Club in two thousand and thirteen. And it was full of it, it was three hundred music industry people that wow. sold out. They yeah. said they said somebody said says our oh, lawyer or someone said, if you'd have dropped a bomb they'd have had to start the music industry again. Wow. Damn. It was crazy. The pressure wow. though. The pressure, yeah, yeah. It was I had like previously we couldn't get anybody from like someone from Virgin Records, let's say an A and R guy from Virgin Records. He would like you couldn't even fucking send him an email and get a reply. I had like people calling me up from record labels like, I can't get in through the door like da, da, da. Oh wow. Like, but we made we made all of the record label people pay to come in and we gave all our friends the free tickets. <laughs> oh that's sweet. Like, and James Bay <laughs> James Bay that's was industry, yeah. opening Fuck for that. us. <laughs> James oh, Bay James opened Bay. For us. Are James, you kidding me? No, are you kidding me? Yeah. yeah. And uh, he was uh, a bit more established than us at that point, but he still wasn't really. Uh, yeah, he was. Just wasn't famous. No. Wow. That was so funny. then that's the so it went from the apart that little studio the little with, the, with the Bulgarian guy and the yeah, the, the yeah. one sister that's a twin. You know what I mean and all that stuff. Yeah. And went from there, it gets uploaded, and then all of a sudden the industry showcase. Yeah. And then ever since then, it's been good. It's it's. It, it's well, been, it's been ups and downs. Ups and downs. In all honesty, you know. Yeah, I want you to be honest. Oh, I'm yeah, your friend yeah. now. In total honesty, yeah. it's ups and downs because you know, you'll know better than anybody in the entertainment world. There's, you know, 
pe- one minute you're this and that, and you got people telling you like, mm. oh, well, you know, the Super Bowl commercial next year. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're a kid, you're just like, oh yeah. yeah. And they're like, we're, <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. so, and we we didn't know like we were just like innocent like we didn't know. So everything that everyone told us, we were like, oh yeah. And we just you know go along with and everything. We often went for the biggest and the best, or well, what we thought at the time. Um, because and, we went naive to it. And, wouldn't. you know, forgetting that we made everything on such a basic level and that we didn't really require that much to continue. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so we uh, we did a lot of, I'd say, unnecessary things. You know, we flew around everywhere. And, uh, but, yeah, we didn't play that many shows. We weren't actually building that much of a fan base we just had this massive the... hype off, ah, a, off a radio yeah. play. Mm. And so we weren't actually like putting in the legwork, going out, playing shows, building mm. fan bases. And that's the important thing. But that's what you're doing now. And that's what yes. we're doing now. And um, yeah, I mean, one of the brilliant things, though, about that whirlwind is that it led to investment so we could do things like work with Rick Rubin. Mm. Right. And yeah. um, that's been... Uh, you know, I don't know what we'd be doing right now if it wasn't for making that record. Yeah. Because um, it's opened a lot of doors and also it's really, it's a good starting point for us because it really reflects what we enjoy and what we're about. And, and it's yeah. just the beginning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and don't in your head think that like, oh, I've been, the five years we struggled and all that stuff. Like, it's just the beginning. And then can mm-hmm. I just say this too, just through my experience, there's been years where I've been I was hot at one point. Yeah. You know, in ni- in nine two thousand. Yeah, you know, I did Jay Leno as a kid as a stand up. Yeah. You know, the Tonight Show. Fantastic. And I was on a s- yeah. late night sketch show. Yeah. And I was getting I was doing, you know, some movie you know, I was like, Oh, I'm the shit. Right. Yeah. And then years later, I couldn't get anyone to pick up the phone to you know, yeah. I couldn't get any work yeah. for five, six years. Oh. In fact, when we first met yeah. He was not in a good place at all. I was in a yeah. terrible. I was thinking about quitting, and wow. I don't know what I'm gonna do, you know. And then, um, you know, I started this helped doing yeah. this podcast, and um, you know, Judd put me on Love. Now, now I'm on a sitcom, so things are fine. Yeah. But, but I think it's just if you have, if you just manage your expectations of the industry, and you know that that and flows, you know, yeah. then you're yeah. not gonna be crushed as much along the way here's the one thing i did do though is i always did ask her i always toured Mm -hmm. i always went up twice a month Mm -hmm. and i always went up when i was in town so i perform five or six times a week regardless yeah he never phoned it that's important that's that's that is the thing that we did not do and it the first management group that looked after us they were sort of like just hoping the fact that the radio hype and everything would mean that, oh, they don't really need to, sorry, they're right. going to get, they're just going to blow up and be this big thing just off mm-hmm. the back of like Zane Lowe spinning them three times and so on and so forth. But it's it's not the way that our kind of music can grow. We're not a Justin Bieber style right, right. And right. Some pop br- sensation yeah. thing. It's a different kind of thing. And not to put a downer on the music industry because uh, there were very... People like Zane Lowe, which are true music aficionados, you know, they um, they gave us good advice, which initially we kind of ignored a little bit because we were talking to so many different people. Um, and um, their opinion of what we should do next was kind of diluted within that. So, um, wow. yeah. But uh, now that we've gone through all of that and put the record out, we're now around very musical minded people we have and wonder, a wonderful t- never of all the time throughout from when we first got actually into the music industry there was always things with our teams all like god that fucking person's not doing that and they should be doing this and uh, why when I call you they're not spoken to this person that you said you're going to speak to last week and you know all these sort of things that, and mm-hmm. it, and you're like am I being too nitpicky or too mm-hmm. and some people some management are like oh you can't micromanage and, so, mm-hmm. and I'm like no you're just fucking lazy yeah. and, and yeah. you know and now and you understand when you meet the right people the right team around you that really believe in you and really want it to work and have te- and have not only uh, and they've taken acts and been with them through the jury. They've built them from nothing to, th- right. they know what it takes. And the mm-hmm. people around us at the minute, um, uh, uh, Ramja Records, Adolphus Ramja and Abby Frackman, they are like, uh, they've, they, we 
we were on our way to Bonnaroo. We were going to go play Bonnaroo. Um, and they, uh, I got a call from a buddy, Dana Nielsen, who worked on the Rick record with us. He's this a wonderful friend, like family. And he's he, the mix engineer. Mix engineer and uh, of the record. And he said, oh, um, I got uh, I got a message from these guys at Ramja Records, and they wanna they wanna talk to you. And I and I sort of said, oh, are they you know are they good people. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, no, they're smart people. They're wonderful people. They're like some of my favorite people in the whole music industry. So I was like, well, at least I can trust that. So we got a call from Dolph on our way to Bonnaroo, and we talked, and he was just so. He was like, look, you put the you put the the cart before the horse in your case you've gone made this massive rec- record with Rick Rubin but you've not gone out and built a fan base to you know to to receive it to receive it so he says we've got to you know put the horse back in front of the cart he says it's going to be a lot of hard work you know it, it also it might not happen right away and it might not happen right away but I want you to let you guys know this though, and I, I really be- believe me when I say it and I'm being just aside from any you know, I know there's a comedy podcast yeah. just stick to your guns right you guys have great lives. I can thank tell you. your your wives are incredible. Oh, thank so you. nice. Thank you, very you know much. what I mean? I'm sorry your crew, about the cats. Your crew Saturday night. Your crew <laughs> okay, Saturday great. night, right? When I, I mean, when I went to your show, everyone I met was so kind to us. You were so kind to us. Oh, mm-hmm. thank you. And um, I'm telling you right now, you guys are so good, and I want you to just thank keep you. at it. Why do you yeah. think we're having you on? Yeah. We yeah, we, we think we should get everyone before they actually... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really <laughs> believe you. that. We did that with guys. Aquafina. Yeah, Aquafina did this before. Yeah, you know. and then the next... Now yeah. we can't... No one can touch her. She's yeah, done crazy. Yeah, yeah. She just hosted SNL. This is, this we right had her nine, like, nine months before. Nine months before. Let's <laughs> yeah, get yeah. her now before... <laughs> we had Jordan Peele after he won an Oscar. Oh, yeah, we had Jordan Peele after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After, after. But still, he would have never gotten the Oscar if Jordan Peele hadn't been in it after. We got Eric Stone Street after Modern Family. After Modern Family. Right, but still, you know what I mean. That would they knew, they knew. But they don't knew. forget us, little people. Yeah, don't ever forget our little people. All right. Um, well, well, we've had some brilliant people who've stuck with us through thick and thin. William Morris, yeah, booking, booking agents. agents. Regardless Fantastic. of anything, they William were Morris. just like. There's a guy there called Kirk Soma who's. He's not. I think he's one of the partners now at the company, but he's based out here in Los Angeles, and he'd been our agent from when we came to America for North America territory. He was our agent from day one, and I remember calling him and say, "Hey, you know, we parted ways with Universal Republic," um, and he was just like, "Oh, I, d- you know, I don't care." He says, "As long as you keep giving me music, I'll keep booking shows." Yeah, you know, and that was like a. That's kind of like your Matt Blake. A I have a guy at CAA. Who during the dark times just was like, just stick with me. I'm gonna be with you. You know what I mean? During the hard times. Yeah. But in the good times, hopefully I'll stay, you know, you won't let me go, you know? And yeah. um I've been with this guy for over twenty years. Wow. Fantastic. And that and that kind of relationship, loyalty goes a long way. It sounds like the guy really lo- uh, is a fan of your music. Yeah. And Matt's a fan of my comedy. And th- that's real. Yeah. Okay. Sure. And you know that there's a lot of stereotypes saying that Hollywood is scumbags and you can't trust with people. Yeah. There are good people in this town. Uh, yeah. yeah. There are. You know. Very much I'm so. not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm a fucking insect. What are we doing at time? Insect. Well over an hour. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, can we take a it. break? Because I have to pee so badly. Okay. Can we do Go take a pee. Advice? Yeah. Can we do yeah. unhelpful? Yeah. Uh, you know what we do at the end, right? Oh yeah. Yes. All right. So I need your um, Lord of the Rings knowledge because you guys are from that area, right? <laughs> of the world, yes. Middle Earth, right? Um, you want to do it? Yo, should we wait for her to do it? Well, I'm not going to wait for my fucking girlfriend. Should we wait for her? <laughs> now let's do it. Um, her- wait, no, stop, wait, stop. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. Yeah, I think we should wait for her. <laughs> I don't want her to get angry. Do you guys know this about me? Uh, so I we came and saw that glue. Yeah, yeah. Um, There's um, a lot of it. I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that. It, yeah. It's, um, I, I, since I was a baby, I've been obsessed with this specific blend brand of glue which is glue all elmers i like this extra strong formula okay right right. and what i do is i stick it on my body and i let it dry and i peel it no way is that good for your skin no it's not good for you it's probably bad for my skin (laughs) but i have this like weird ocd thing with with elmers elmers so during like um birthday don't send me any but (laughs) no but in elmers they people send me glue all the time you know what i mean which is um wow fantastic did you still do this did you still do it the, the habit, yeah. Well, some of the bottles are half empty, it seems. So you definitely must 
put it somewhere. I do. Yeah. Just on my fingers, okay? I know where you're getting at. <laughs> I get crazy, man. fucking <laughs> European pervert. But, uh, <laughs> Are you ready, babe? Oh, yeah, yeah, we haven't done it yet. Yeah, no, come back. We waited. We waited for you. Do the thing. Do the thing. On Helpful Advice with Bobby, Kalila, and the Ruben Brothers. Ruben? Ru- it's hard to do in the deep <laughs> Ruben. The Ruben Brothers. <laughs> hey, guys. All of you rock, especially... Bobby. There we go. I have a bit of a problem, so let's get into it. Basically, I'm a liar. I lie to my friends, family friends, strangers, and maybe even to myself. It always starts small, but uh, snowballs, which I recognize is always my fault, but I can't help to stop myself. I find myself craving attention and just the acceptance that lying about small things gets me. People seem to like me more, think I'm funnier and more interesting, more worth talking to when I sprinkle in lies to my stories or personal history. The problem spun out of control last year when I was still a senior in university. I really admire actors, comedians, and artists, and I aspire to be like all of them one day. But I don't seem to have any real talent, or at least not yet. I would tell my friends about going to improv class and attending open mics, but that was all a lie. I only went to comedy introductory class, but because I was too nervous and lazy to push through the pain. You don't know how to edit these? or? I like all of it. Figure out that, uh, if I have any talent at all. Keep going, keep going. Regardless, when Bobby was coming to town, I lied to the same university friends and said I was Bobby's opening act. <laughs> My friends were so excited for me that I couldn't tell them the truth, so I never did. When the show finally came, I basically catfished my friends with another lie, saying that my relative had gone terminally ill and I had to leave town. I even went so far to tell my friends that Bobby had personally told me that he understood oh and it was okay God. with bailing on uh, him. Now, I'm in my first year working in a new city with a new job in corporate America. I'm meeting all sorts of new and interesting people, so the urge to lie has resurfaced. So far, I've kept... <laughs> I kept Oh really? Yeah. So far, I've kept my so far I've kept my lying to a minimum. But I've recently met a girl I really like, and the desire to lie her lie to her is huge because I want her so badly to uh, reciprocate the feelings. Should I tell this girl about my lying past? How do I stop lying to people? Thanks for your help. A twenty four year old sleeper. Oh wow. my god! I have, it's like catch me if you can. Yeah, that's intense. Right? Yeah. yeah. Damn. Damn. Bobby's opening act. I, can I just say something? <sighs> I lie a lot as well. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you know that? Yeah, but you fib. You don't, you know. They're the same thing, babe. Yeah. I mean, what I'm saying is it doesn't destroy people's lives. You didn't tell people you were in Django Unchained. I know, but, yeah. what, <laughs> but, no, but... No, but give me a movie that I haven't seen, but ask me if I saw it. Oh, have you seen The Crypting Night? Oh, Loved it, man. That was really that's good. That's the, the one. Lead, that... The lead was incredible. He should get... I've never seen it. Who's the lead? Uh, no, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I lie all the time. That's what okay, I do all so the time. Okay, so I really wanted him to watch the movie Amores Peros. Yes. And he desperately didn't want to watch the movie yeah. with me. Yeah. I, had, or I had already seen it. And I was like, you have to see it. You yeah. have to see it. While I was in the bathroom for two minutes, I come back. And he was like, what was the movie you, you wanted to see? And I was like, Amores Peros. And he was like, is it? And he goes on to tell me the whole synopsis of it. Yeah. And he was like, yeah. To do with this? And, and I was this? like, yeah, you're actually right. That's exactly the movie. He's like, oh, I've already seen it. And it turns out he in that two minutes that I was in the restroom, he Wikipedia'd the plot. That's good I, thinking. I, I do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, dude. I do, I do that. <laughs> just look at, just look at his wife. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, with, I really wanted to, my buddy said, like, I said, like, Breaking Bad was the best thing that was ever made until, and I was just like, you know, I really loved it. And I was talking to a buddy of mine, and he said, well, have you seen The Sopranos? And I said, that old, that gangster thing from the, and he was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he was, I was, he was like, look, here's my, um, HBO account to sign it and start watching it yeah so I said okay and um, whenever somebody like really pours something on me like you've got it oh it's the best it's the best and I'm always like well I'll give it a shot then yeah and so I started watching it and my wife Kayla she's not into really gangster stuff but yeah. I, I love I love that stuff so yeah. I start I start um so like staying up to like five six a.m. and I'm like, what the fuck? Am I? I have things to do <laughs> in like a few hours, but I'd be staying up and I'm like, why? Are you it's not? a good show. It's a good show, and yeah, I said, yeah. and and I was trying to force her to watch it with me. Yeah, and she didn't want to, and I said, look, if you watch this with me, I'll watch Game of Thrones with you. She really wanted me to watch Game of Thrones, and I was like, I don't like magical whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Magical, whatever. yeah, and so she's and so that's where that shit comes from, yeah. wherever he's from. That magical, <laughs> bullet. so I said, Well, I tell you what, okay, I'll watch that if you watch The Sopranos with me. We'll watch The Sopranos first, and then we'll watch Game of Thrones, yeah. 
and I, to- I had no intention of watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> I was, Are you hearing this for the first time? No, she knows. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Can I just say this though? Fuck, fuck face. All right. <laughs> Game of Thrones. Game I of Thrones it. I is a it. far superior superior show over The Sopranos. You think? I think Game of Thrones is one of the best shows ever made. Mm-hmm. Well, I am. I'm now. I have. So watched it you, all. You, you have you watched it all? I've watched it all. Okay, good. Has he? Okay, yeah. good. I yeah. haven't. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have, you have. There's a robot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> see, is so this is robot? the thing. I, re- I I I have a pattern when it comes to. <laughs> To reading things, I haven't read, I haven't read one storybook unless my mum had read it to me when I was like five years old. Yeah, like, yeah. I um, I only read factual things, and it kind of applies <laughs> to movies. You know? I'm, uh, you remind me of my brother Steve in a weird you way. You guys really yeah. have that same yeah. dynamic. That I same think. like innocent <laughs> dynamic. And when you talk, you're trying to be real, but you're so innocent and whimsical that uh. it just sounds so fucking funny to me. You are like funny. I would just laugh right in your fucking stupid face. <laughs> God, you're so cute and funny. Thank you. Is that what you like about him? Yeah, he's so funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. For... You are, you're, and you're oddly polite in a weird way, though. I like it. <laughs> like I your like brother. It. Yeah, like my brother. He's you're just, just like, so... like my brother Steve. Yeah. Is that okay, the only one? So how one? do we help this guy? I don't, like I don't want to help. Logical liar. Do you guys have advice? I, I, I would, I would say that you're probably better not to do those things. Uh, don't act <laughs> on because uh, <laughs> when. The problem you get when you tell a lie is that eventually the lie will catch up with you. Mm -hmm. You can be so good at lying and be great at it, because I'm pretty good at lying as well. But you can be really good at it, but eventually it'll get you. It'll bite you in the ass, and it's not worth doing it, because at the end of the day, you know, you're not achieving anything by... You're lying to yourself by yeah. lying you're lying to yourself more than anybody and you're all that praise yourself. you're receiving is not real either no I also do think that the extent at which you lie really warrants a nice sit down with a therapist to really dig deep as to why the pathological patterns just keep going and there's something very insecure and broken maybe yeah. from your childhood mm. that m- makes you feel like you have to overcompensate and come up with these fantastical stories that aren't true and that's you are hurting a lot of people by doing that. You're gonna lose friendships. Mm. You're gonna lose a lot of different things in your life, far, far more than you you would think. You, or, <laughs> or you can lie to win as Bobby does it. Or you can lie enough, pathologically lie enough, and one day you too can be the president of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> good point. I, I, that really is a good point. I know yeah. I made it as a joke, but, but that fool lies every other fucking but word. But that, that comes with oh, money, yeah. right? That comes with It doesn't matter. Privilege he's a lying and lies. fool. That's that right? combination. And um, he's got the top job. Mm-hmm. And here's another thing about, I don't believe in karma anymore either. <laughs> because of this weird bull, like he's the president, he's this fucking bull, this dude, this dude, right? And and that's the top job. There's no such thing as karma. And then when people go, he's going to get his karma later, when? He's 72 years old. <laughs> he's going to die in a couple of years. What karma? What about Bill Cosby? He got a chicken patty thrown at his face that's in true. jail. That's true. Oh, Mind you, in, oh, sorry, I didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> We've already covered this. We covered it. We covered Bill Cosby and the chicken patty. That being said, I don't know whether being the president is the best outcome for your life. I mean, that's true. That is true. It's a lot of work. That is a lot of work. I'm sure. And a lot of of pressure. It's a lot of 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 pressure. (laughs) Yeah, only a true narcissist could really have that job, I think. Uh, uh, there's there's healthy narcissism yeah. that can get you you know through the door and where you want to be, and We're there's a, a point show. at which yeah. uh, narcissism <laughs> actually uh, burns the whole world down. In which case, you know. What are you doing, like the beautiful mind shit? What what are these notes that you have, George? What are you writing down there? I'm texting Gilbert the uh, who are. Uh sponsors worse to remind him to say the code okay so that, uh, oh, do we have another one do have, I don't like that sponsors? lie all you want okay. lie all you want that's so we get, is there another uh, <laughs> unhelpful this, advice that email hi. scared me hi guys my name is Nick I'm 21 from Australia recently I've been offered an IT support position at a submarine base which pays really well a what base submarine submarine oh my God, it's, they still have those 
The war. <laughs> oh, the war. The <laughs> I really lost my passion in IT and have always been more of a creative artistic type. I really love music production, but I'm too scared to commit to something that has a new, has a low employment rate, especially where I'm from. I really hate my job and I really want to get out and follow my passions, but I just can't get the strength together to push myself to what I really want to be doing with my life. What advice can you give me to help me find the courage? How do you overcome, uh, how have you overcome similar experiences in your life? Well, I mean, when you <laughs> when you're 21, I mean, you probably don't have that many responsibilities which you're going to sacrifice by changing your career path. Or That's whatever. true. Mm. At that 21 does give you the liberty to change course without much oh, yeah. repercussions. Yes. I mean, some people are still in university and that up until the 25. The what would have been your plan B, if not for music? I didn't really have one, but that's, um, that's, that's key. That's, that's it. the key right there. What you just yeah. said, you hit it on the fucking button once again, Rupert. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, yeah. dude. You and I are on point together tonight. All right. Very nice. All right. <laughs> you didn't have a plan B. Did you have one too, Henry? No, because soccer was done. <laughs> yeah, 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 that yeah. was number one. <laughs> yeah. That's number one. When music is your plan B, that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This guy, there's two emails in a row. People are like, well, I'm thinking about doing the arts. People that do the arts, they don't think about it. You just they do just it. do it because that's all they have just to do. It oozes out of you. You can't help it, yeah. right? And we've yeah. met people that have spoken to us. Yeah. <laughs> there was a guy in, in uh, I forget his name. I, we, we met him in Nashville. And a couple of people have said this to us and looked us really dead in the eye and just said, I mean, well, you've got to just keep trying at this because... I mean, what else are you guys gonna do? <laughs> like, and I'm just yeah, like, yeah. and I'm like, shit, it really is. It's it. This is it, or else. Oh, they said that dead eye do. Dead eye, just dead. Do you remember that guy? Um, yeah. Fuck, I haven't spoken to him so long. He's a music sync guy, like a sync guy, and he's just like, yeah, well, you, you know, yeah. I mean, what else are you gonna do? Yeah. yeah. Like, but it was not like, what else are you? I mean, what else are you gonna do? It was like, <laughs> yeah. what, I mean, what else are you gonna do? Yeah. Like, you but I mean, you, uh, you're not skilled to do anything else. <laughs> yeah. He actually oh, said that to us without knowing that, us very well, yeah. just like, you're not skilled to do anything. I was like, he knows me. Uh, my, I remember my dad said a few times, like, if he, if he couldn't play guitar, I don't know what he'd do. Too, you know, close. Oh, uh, close people. friends again. <laughs> yeah, you know, and um, yeah, I, you know, there's truth in that. So, you know. Let me, I wanted to ask you, is your parents, are they proud of you guys? Yeah. Yeah, I was actually talking to my, to my dad today and we were very proud of him today, actually, because he, he works in uh, horse uh, welfare, horse racing welfare. They oh, you guys, have, they have two horses, horse. right? They have yes. two rescued race horses. And our dad actually put forward, um, they got 100,000 signatures to put forward an EDM in Parliament regarding um, the, um, the, the racing industry back home. They're self-regulated. And it was a thing to bring it to the attention of the government today um, to try and get that changed. And he said he was almost brought to tears in Parliament today. As they, oh, so, wow. so, and and so I, we were very proud of him today. But he, in turn, said that he's he they they look at all of the stuff that we do. They're always looking through all the Facebook and that. You haven't it. seen him in a while, huh? Yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah, a little so, while. Yeah. Yeah. And you it's just the both of you. Do you have a sister? We have a younger, have a younger sister, sister. Yeah, I when's think I lightly saw, stopped and found that her? out. <laughs> well, we, we hadn't seen them for two years, and then they came to Rupert's wedding in February of this year and then that was the last that we've seen them and then we'll see them whenever our green cards get signed out mm. God, and I then... want you to see your parents and you find so bad I don't know why <laughs> thank you. Yeah. I want you guys to thank have you. that love you know what I mean thank you it, I mean yeah. you do that is one of the sacrifices um, you know with an, an occupation like this and you'll know like you have to travel and um, yeah. mm-hmm. I think with the presidency at the moment it's actually delaying our, our green card process a little bit we're allowed to yeah. we can work here we just can't leave I really wanted to spend Christmas in wow. Scunford wow. that's crazy oh, it's Trump yeah. that's fucking cock well there's yeah. a lot. this fucking guy I've had a I've had a fucking love with this guy it's aneurysm aneurysm oh yeah yeah oh my god <laughs> You guys, do you guys ever fight before a show or fight? I mean, you guys are brothers. Like my sister and I fight, but we get, we've shared the same room for so long that it doesn't quite calculate as a fight. We just get get on with it anyway. Sure. We have te- we, you know, most of the time we get along. This this tour that we're on currently at the minute, we've got along very well, haven't we, Rupert? Yeah. Uh, we, well, we've managed to, <laughs> managed to sleep. Yeah. Pause. Managed to, uh, <laughs> uh, a reasonable amount. Yeah. Um, Eight which, hours a day, which 
you know that is it lack helps, of sleep. It really, helps. Uh, yeah, it depends who. You, it depends the people that surround you as well. The, yeah. the minute we're on tour, there's wonderful um, group. Uh, Mexican band called Cafe Tacuba mm-hmm. the best and the best they are yeah so lovely so well. such wonderful people human beings all their crew are so positive and nice and friendly and it's just so so blessed to be with them and it kind of rubs off on you that energy mm-hmm. but at times Rupert and I will find ourselves just alone in a motel room in the middle of like nowhere with the with like a crackhead knocking on your window asking if you want some drugs <laughs> yeah and tensions get frayed because you're like you know Rupert all like Rupert cuts his own hair and he has done for the past few years. That's, that's, that's impressive. That's Thank you. That's, 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 that's. What the fuck did you say to me, man? Rupert cuts his own hair. You cut your own fucking hair? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it got to the point where... He I read was, that Keith Richards did, and now he does. <laughs> I, I didn't yeah. do it he to He also imitate. snorted his dad's ashes. <laughs> <laughs> so are you going to do that too? I don't think so. He yeah. doesn't want to be cremated. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that would be hard. <laughs> That would be difficult. Big, yeah. Yeah. Good, but, point. Um, Good point, Rupert. I, <laughs> thank you. Well, I, uh, I I don't do it to um, to imitate uh, Keith Richards, although I do respect him. I do love him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, as a guitar player, but he, he uh, no myself. It got to the point where I was like, I want to stop doing the things I dislike in my life, and one of the things was going to the hairdressers mm. and waiting in line, and then having to make small talk for. 20 minutes while they cut your hair yeah, and yeah. I and also it costs money and <laughs> yeah yeah well it came about I was in Canada and um, we were living in we had been living in London but we were on tour and I was in Canada and uh, the closest hair salon um, it, it was before a show the closest hair salon said it only accepted cash on the internet so and you I did Canadian dollars I didn't know whether it meant Canadian dollars or what and I only had a few yeah. American dollars yeah. so um <laughs> And I had some small scissors with me, and yeah. I thought, "Well, I'll just trim a little bit." And then a little bit turned into quite a lot. And, yeah. uh, and then it, it looked better. For, it looked better for it. And yeah, then yeah. since then, I practiced a lot. But that led to a big fight. <laughs> Why? It led to a big, because we were all really tired. We'd been having like three or four hours of sleep a night, and we were in this room. And I said to him, because he's so he's messy, and he doesn't do it on purpose. He just <laughs> does it because he's the sort of person that will get out a tub of margarine and take the lid off and make some like toast and then he'll go and sit down and eat the toast and then he'll just leave it there and I'll be like oh that fucking, would aggravate I'm me. like fucking put the margarine away <laughs> that would aggravate the but fuck I t- out I of me I tell him I tell him that and he goes oh well I'm gonna go back later and make some exactly and I say, but then but I say I say this to him I'm like well yeah but you know like a, a, an insect crawling it Spider. Oh, spider. Spider. You have a spider. weird thing with fucking insects. I think, I, I think that's your phobia and those are your issues. I, I'm going to side with Rupert. Thank Rupert you. doesn't want to pull out this fucking margarine nine times out of the fucking fridge. Well, but I'm, no, he I'm did it with his hair. He did it with his hair. this guy. We're in this motel room. It's like Laura Croft. You can survive. You know what I mean? Tomb Raider. Yeah, right you're a Tomb Raider, dude. But we're, in, we're in the motel room and he's cutting his hair. And I didn't know he was doing this. He, I was I was in the shower and I come out and Rupert's cutting all his hair and the, it's, these are the bathrooms in the motels the bathroom the motel, and the hair is all over my toothbrush <laughs> just all over the now, toothbrush now stop for a second why the fuck did you do that you fucking animal <laughs> uh, so I learnt over time that it helps to wet your hair otherwise it kind of fluffs around <laughs> and covers a large area when it lands and, stop, uh, stop 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 learning stop. so much you, let me just get this straight. Learning curve. Exactly. You learned that you had to wet your own hair, right? Yes. So it doesn't get all over the place. So it kind but, of. But how about together. removing your brother's toothbrush, <laughs> or you're fucking cutting the area so, that he's cutting? I mean, I could that have didn't done occur that. To you, you fucking asshole. <laughs> no, but at the same time, you can. I I believe you can just simply rinse off the hairs from the toothbrush. That's a good point too. <laughs> that's a very good. That's a very good point. But, in, in my, he has AIDS in his hair. What the fuck are you worried about? In, you know my, I mean? in my defense, though, I was like, "Your greasy hair that you've not 
No, wash. You just uh, wash it. Sh- wash it in the sink. He's your Wait, fucking no, no, brother. No, but you he, didn't, fucking- he didn't use any shampoo with the washing. He just oh, wet. Oh, here we go. Wet. Now you didn't say but that, did you? We can go back a few more years to the pranks <laughs> where yeah. I had my no, toothbrush. No, 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 don't, no. We don't <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> prank. <laughs> <laughs> no, shut the fuck up, Henry. I gotta hear this prank. What did he do with your toothbrush with a the prank? A lot of people hear this prank. Yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're not leaving this fucking room until you fucking tell me. Now, what did he do with your fucking toothbrush? the prank well he put it up in a place where it shouldn't go in his asshole <laughs> in his asshole no, 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 so I, I mean the asshole. You have no to it was not it was not on his penis where was it I mean it could have been in that region yeah, oh, oh, okay, stop 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 I know I'm, I know I'm exactly what, to... I know what you did Henry yeah <laughs> Henry Henry you don't stick your t- his toothbrush <laughs> in your grimy taint <laughs> Because if it's not the asshole or the dick and it's in that region, it's in the taint region. It's chody. Right? The chody, right? That little no. no man's land, right? And let me say something right now, right? You never put your brother's fucking toothbrush in the no man's land. All no, right? once, just once. Yeah. I, I, I don't care if it was fucking nine or once. It doesn't matter. What? Tell me. Okay, we used to play pranks where we get bored. And because no, we're in the bed set, we're in the bed set. So I, I put the I put the toothbrush onto my and I took a picture. And then when he was painting, <laughs> wait, 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 stop, 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 stop. He was you painting. Put, I wonder why I need his English accent sometimes gets away. You stuck his fucking toothbrush onto your penis for no reason. For no reason, not exactly right. Not that there ever would be a reason. There is no reason for that. <laughs> Actually, you're a good point, Rupert. Yeah. And then what, what? And then you use the? Did you use the toothbrush? Well, unknowingly, I let him use the toothbrush, and it's then fucking incest. Because we had it. We no, we had. Yeah, you tell me it's incest. <laughs> no, we, we uh, had a big. We'd had an argument. Yeah. And so I took a picture, and as he's he was painting, uh, we had an old tool case that said Room Brothers on it, and we yeah. just put it up on stage. Well, it said Room Brothers on it after I painted. And Rupert it. was really like putting some effort and work into it. Yeah, yeah. And I was sat across the other side of the room. Yeah. And he's like mid ruin brothers like yeah. he's like in it and i was saying rupert check your phone yeah <laughs> and he's he's like he's really like he's kind of we'd argued and he was like all pissed off at me and he was like no i'm i'm it gets very finicky when he's yeah. like creating things and he goes no no no, no, no. i'm no I'm, I'm busy i'm i said no check you, you check your phone there's something really important on there so we've got an email sent through you could check it he's like <laughs> and so he picks up his phone yeah <laughs> and he glances down at it and he, the, the like, the pause on his, he just looks down at the phone. Yeah. And he, he, his hand, like, trembles imagine. a little bit, and he's... Well, I couldn't figure out what he, it was. He couldn't it figure out what it was. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the best bit, when he couldn't figure out what it was. He's like, well, well, that's, an that's another you. question. <laughs> <laughs> You've never seen, seen another man's penis? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't look like, I mean, it... I, I, I can't, <laughs> no, okay. I, no, I can't remember the photo specifically, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. it was an unusual angle, I think. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. But this is things that brothers do to one another. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's very exactly. Game of Thrones. It's very Game of Thrones. Yeah, very he's Thrones. looking down. He's looking down at his phone, and I'm just sat with so much like enjoyment on yeah. sat on my bed. And yeah. he's like, he looks down. And he's, he just like trembled, and he looks up at me, and the, the anger in his face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he goes, "When, when, when did you do this?" <laughs> <laughs> and I said a few days ago <laughs> and he oh. exploded and charged towards the in bed a, in a rage in a rage and I that had the advantage the after. height of it. I had my feet up so I was kicking him away yeah 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 and he never really got to me but yeah. it was um yeah that was that was a fight that was a fight yeah but rightly so I suppose I'd it's, he, it's understandable, understandable. It's a, your brother so his brother your pulls brother. knives on him yeah my brother yeah. pulls knives on him have we ever pulled yeah. knives on one another I've never owned a knife, so I don't think yeah. so. Um, because when we fight, my brother and I, it's so personal. It's red zone all And the it's way. so red zone And it's because there's so much love there. So any kind of betrayal there is a real betrayal. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, that's he, you betrayed one. your brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he's and he's done. also a proper, really nice guy. <laughs> and you put your foul dick on his fucking... <laughs> You're fucking. I can't believe animal. you said that on. No, I, I, I love didn't it. I say love it. it. I, I was. We got it. Yeah. We got it. Got out yeah. of me. Thank so what? We want to promote what? You want to promote your um your album? What's the album sure. called? Yeah, it's called All My Shades of Blue. All My Shades of Blue. Yeah, and it was uh, it was released June sixth, and so it's been out for a few months now, and, and you can find it online. I love it. Yeah, and it's my favorite album of the year. And oh, thank um, you. Thank you. And I I also believe that you guys are gonna be big stars, really big stars. And I always also 
when you do become big stars, please do this podcast again. We, we because it would help us immensely. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very kind to think that. Uh, well, that you have those aspirations for us. Um, I believe, dude. Yeah, we, I really do believe. We would love to be back. Yeah, yeah. To, um, with this has been the most fun that we've had. Not and, only that, I'm gonna yeah. say this, and I have to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I didn't know how this was going to go. Yeah. <laughs> because in my head, I'm like, I usually have comedians. Mm-hmm. And we had Navarro. He was very good, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But you guys are probably my biggest surprise of all time. Oh, really? Of all Killed time. It. You guys oh, thank you were so interesting, so yeah. funny, right? <laughs> yes. And how f- long? What are we at specifically? Almost a movie. Really? Really. Wow. Yeah. Not a rom-com, more than a rom-com. And I do think that your story of living with a Bulgarian night terror guy yeah, should show. be a show. That's a funny show. I used to have to help him because he couldn't He you, couldn't call the NHS properly to help him with his knee. National health. <laughs> with the Bulgarian guy? The Bulgarian guy. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. he would come and knock on the door yeah. and he'd be like, Hey, uh, and it, uh, oh, after every sentence that he would say, and now I remember it's coming back to me. Every sentence he'd go, you know, I turn a uh, fucking hell. Every sentence ended <laughs> it was with fucking, fucking hell. hell. Yeah, yeah. Every sentence ended with that, and I used to help him. I Henry, you know the show's over right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, were well, you trying to break the end. fucking? Were you trying to break the record <laughs> of how long He's trying to break the this record. fucking thing is? You know what I mean? What the fuck are you doing, Henry? <laughs> Sorry. There was one person that actually, <laughs> there was one person's name that I have to. Yeah. And he 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 said the reason the guys know about you is because of me. Yeah. He's a friend of ours. Yeah. Also like a brother to us. Uh-huh. What's his name? In, he's called Gianni. Gianni Paolo. 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 And the, George actually wait, you knows. Know him. George knows is this kid. Is he Theo's guy? Yeah. Oh. It's Theo's guy Wait, Johnny Parlo So Gianni. he says that we know You guys because of him Well he was like Well I, I've, I've sent I played the music to George And he could be bullshitting No oh, no, that's George, no, 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 no 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 That is a lie That's a fucking lie yeah. That's what I Fuck Johnny Parlo <laughs> I don't ever want to see Johnny Parlo again <laughs> no, Fuck that guy All right? He's an enemy And if you've associated with Theo Fuck Theo too all right? I'm not afraid of anybody That's a fucking lie And I'm going to say this right now You want to go break the record On this fucking podcast We'll break the record, okay? I want to tell you this right now, Henry, all right? And Rupert, okay? Stiles, Stilesman. Stilesman? What a Stilesman, right? I shut the fuck up, all right? I discovered you guys through the grace of God. The grace of God. I believe. Right? I was in my bed, right? And I was just like, what is this? It was just a, a whim, right? It was like it was directed toward me, all mm-hmm. right? I've never heard of no Johnny, John, 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 right? <laughs> and I don't ever want to hear his name again in this house. You hear me? All right? You guys but did a great job. Shout out to Johnny. Shout anyways. out to Johnny and Theo Bon, all right? You guys did a great job. I have a promotions too, all right? Okay. I'm on a network s- sitcom s- called Splitting Up Together, yeah. ABC, Tuesday night, 930, all right? There's been no billboards around LA. <laughs> they haven't done one commercial for it, and I'm literally afraid. Are they going to start though, right? No, they're done. No, they didn't do any. Mm. They they're didn't like, do any for the Connors No, because they're either. like, yeah, but they're like, well, you guys are following the Connors. So I go, what if nobody watches them? So we need a sleeper kingdom. And so we need a little help here, man. DVR it. Yeah, because I cannot go on the road this year again. And, and I can't do pilot season again. <laughs> I just can't. I'll, I'll bite the edges of my fingers and I'm getting too old. So please watch them. T- it's, a, it's a white family comedy okay it's nice mm-hmm. there's white people in it there's some <laughs> Asians too as well mm-hmm. you know what I mean but please watch <laughs> I want to give give the room brothers a round of applause everybody you guys are great thank you it was thank wonderful you, you can get the Ridgewall 10% off at ridgewall.com slash promo code tigerbelly and your first three meals at blueapron.com uh, we, we can gift it yeah. to the uh, to the oh, room brothers they're Ridge Wallets they're amazing the, the, okay I'm gonna say this is I use this as a wallet Okay, we have these are for to give away for them right there. Okay, so this is my favorite wallet of all time, right? Um, we're gonna give you which one? Do you have blue or black? I got oh. black. You want That's gunmetal. Okay. Yeah. Gun oh, gun gun blue. This is so strange <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I hear the my... Ridge Wallet stuff all the time, and yeah. I actually looked it up after this mm. thing. I was yeah, like, yeah. I need to get it. I should get one of those. <laughs> so it's an actual wallet. It's like that yeah. one right there. Incredible because I was I said to my wife Carrie today I said I could do with a new wallet yeah I have yeah, not did, said, did, that, that, he said that before oh, I said I could do with a new wallet <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, well, I could do with a new wallet 
Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. this is fantastic. Yeah, I yeah. love this wallet. Thank you, guys. Yeah, you're welcome, dude. Um, thank you for doing it. Give yeah. them another round of applause. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> so if you want a wallet like the Ruin Brothers, go to... <laughs> Uh, ridgewall.com with the promo code Tiger Belly and if you want Blue Apron for your first three meals free go to blueapron.com slash belly and if you're wondering about that Cosby story the chicken patty they're talking about you can check it out at our Patreon at dot com slash Tiger Belly guys you can follow us on Instagram at Tiger Belly on Twitter at the Tiger Belly and email us any questions at the Tiger Belly at gmail.com have a good night Woo!